Welcome to Statesboro, Georgia, the site of today's 1AA matchup between number one, Georgia Southern, and number five, Appalachian State. Hi, everybody. I'm Ted Byrne, along with Pete Yannity. And today, Pete, we've got a great one for 1AA football as well as the Southern Conference. Certainly. Number one against number five nationally, and two teams that were among the three expected to contend for the title in this league. So today's game not only impacts what could happen from the playoff picture down the road, but the outcome here today could go a long way, will go a long way, to decide in the league title. Last year it was firm in Appalachian and Georgia Southern all in a log jam at the top. This year each of those teams looking for their own piece of the pie. That's right. And last week Appalachian a one point win over Furman. So uh, this game this week and then Georgia Southern's game with Furman down the line are really the key games everyone circled as they uh, went into the season. As we look at the key players for both teams, Appalachian State, let's start with their quarterback. He starts every play. He is Joe Burchett. He's a sophomore starting his second game and he's really come on this year. In fact, he's their third starter this season and a big guy at that, 6'4 and 235, hangs in the pocket well and he showed a lot of poise on a fourth quarter drive last week that led to the winning points. And defense, that's the hallmark of an Appalachian team, and they've got the best of the best in Joe Best. Great name for a guy, a linebacker who made 17 tackles against Furman. He's playing healthy this year. Last year was bothered all year long by ankle injuries, but his key today is working as the spy, if you will, keeping an eye on Adrian Peterson, the great Georgia Southern running back, especially between those tackles, making sure that the fullback doesn't kill him up the middle. And Adrian Peterson is the key to the game for Georgia Southern. They must establish AP up the middle. And something you have to know about him if you haven't seen him play. What a talent, and he not only runs over you, he can run by you. So if uh, Best does his work inside, you still have to worry about the boundary, and Appalachian last year did a pretty decent job of that, and that's their focus today also. And while offense might be the mark for Georgia Southern, they've got a good defensive player in Freddie Pescada. Oh, he's super, and just a sophomore, but a lot of folks around the league will tell you he's maybe the best defensive lineman in this conference right now, as much of a speed guy as he is a strength guy. As far as the keys for today's game, what do you see for Appalachian? Well, last year when they won uh, over Georgia Southern in Boone by a point, they uh, they forced the uh, the issue defensively. If you will. They created four key turnovers, and that's what they'll try to do again today. They they confused uh, Georgia Southern's quarterback Greg Hill last year big time. It was as much of a mental game for them as was a physical game. And for uh, their defense, what do you think they're going to have to do? Well, uh, from a standpoint of uh, Georgia Southern's defense, they're going to see an Appalachian team that spreads things out, and they use the same personnel whether they're in kind of a spread look or in the eye. They don't go with the eye that much anymore. This year, regardless of which quarterback they've had, they'll often go with four or five wides as much to establish the run as the pass. Well, the Eagles of Georgia Southern turnovers were the problem last year. They have to keep the turnovers down to a minimum. Yeah, they had four turnovers. Uh, uh, points that were scored off of a couple of those, and uh, they were just huge in that ball game. And that's something I'm sure that has been discussed throughout this week by the Eagles staff. And defensively, I think they're going to have to put a lot of pressure on that sophomore quarterback of Appalachia. And they've got the speed to do it, and that could be a huge bonus in this game. Can they confuse Burchett as much as Appalachian State did Greg Hill a year ago. Both teams have great special teams. This should be a good one. Stand by. We've got number one Georgia Southern against number five Appalachian State coming up next in the best of one double A football in the Southern Conference. From its beginning in 1921. The Southern Conference has become a model for success. Today, the Southern Conference and its 12 member institutions are still nationally acclaimed as a Division I conference, which instills academic and athletic excellence into the lives of its student athletes. Countless All-Americans in a variety of sports have called and continue to call the Southern Conference home. In competition and in the classroom, the Southern Conference is viewed as both a pioneer and a trendsetter. Back we are at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. Both clubs have taken their sidelines and are out of the locker room. Captains have met in the center of the field. There you see Jerry Moore, the coach at uh, Appalachian in his 12th season as the head coach at Appalachian State. 92 and 44 overall record in his 19th year of coaching. On the other sidelines, Paul Johnson, who graduated from Western Carolina and got a master's degree from Appalachian State in his fourth season as Georgia Southern's head football coach and both of these coaches Pete want this game very badly yeah, especially Paul Johnson most coaches will tell you they forget about the game the year before but Paul Johnson said earlier this week he has reminded his team he very much remembers that loss up in Boone by uh, Appalachian and keep in mind too that the Mountaineers have had their success against uh, Georgia Southern over the years even before the Eagles joined the Southern Conference they've won eight of the 14 games in fact Paul Johnson is one and two against only one team in the league and that's Appalachian he's only lost two Southern Conference games against these Mountaineers. And since 1996, Appalachian has only lost six road games out of all of those seasons, so they played very well on the road. There's Jim Jackson, our referee, and he is about to take his position, and the teams are set to kick off. Georgia Southern will be receiving 
And it is a beautiful day in southern Georgia, just like they like it. Warm, just a little humidity, not much, but the no see are out there, the flying jaws, the little bugs. That's what the opponents don't like. So we are set to go with the kickoff. Appalachian to kick it off to Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, only one man back deep. Not a very deep kick, but it's caught at the 12, to the 25, all the way up to the 30. And there's a pile up on the ground. Somebody thought the ball popped loose, but it didn't. And again, this game going to be played with a lot of emotion, that's for sure. As was the case last year, Appalachian seems to turn it up a notch emotionally when they go at it with the Eagles, and last year's uh, emotions will certainly be remembered today. Offensively for Georgia Southern, Charles Clark, who was a guard, got moved to center during the year at center. Jim McCoy, Dietrich Everett, Michael Anderson, and Paul Collins, a true freshman, getting a start at right tackle. And a key area for this team. They're still trying to develop that front. All right, here we go on offense. J.R. Revere at quarterback. Yeah, and they'll head off right side. Looks like Adrian Peterson is going to get a late pitch and turn it up for a couple of yards. As we told you earlier, Peterson's the kind of guy that can beat you on the outside. A year ago, Appalachian did a nice job walking the safeties up, keeping the outside people at home, and really stuffed the run just a little bit uh, for Georgia Southern. They're trying to do that again. For Appalachian, you got uh, Jimmy Freeman, Jason Soul, Ryan Watson, and Josh Jeffries. Those are on the line. The linebackers, Justin Severance, had a great game last week. Joe Best, we've talked about him, and Wesleyan Hunter. He's a guy that recovered a fumble last year against Georgia Southern. Second down for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Looks like an audible being called at the line by J.R. Revere. And in motion to the near side, and they'll pitch it to him. Trying to turn it upfield. Adrian Weathers, and we talked about this, Pete, in the opening. If Georgia Southern couldn't necessarily establish up the middle, they'd have to work the outside, and it looks like they're going there first. Game time change for Appalachian. We showed you Corey Hall as a starting cornerback. Uh, he actually has started the game at safety. They just changed that right when they came out. That's where he played last year, and you'll uh, you'll see him come across number 24, the best athlete on the field, the best defensive back in this league, and one of the best in the nation. He is at safety today because Appalachian plays a lot of man with their corners against the running team. They don't want to waste them out there. They want him in the in the middle of everything. Now there is Appalachian absolutely smothering Adrian Peterson on a handoff. He lost about a yard on that play. Look for them to try to do that all day long and best in the other folks, although Appalachian had a fine defensive lineman, Jamie Lovern, go down with a season-ending knee injury just a couple of weeks ago, and that'll be a big part uh, in the middle of trying to plug things up. His replacement is a guy named Ryan Watson, did okay last week against Furman. Jimmy Freeman, of course, leading tacklers on that play. Second down now and 11 for Georgia Southern. They'll split a man wide to the right, man in the slot on the right. Peterson, a lone runner in the backfield, and they won't pitch to him. J.R. Revere going to try to turn it upfield and gets to the 46 before he's brought down. So far, we've seen the secondary for Appalachian, the safeties in particular, laying back a little bit, almost playing uh, the uh, the running game from a deep standpoint. But Remy Owalowo and Hall, they're on the move. Where that ball is going, they are flying to it. So it's going to be a third down and six for Georgia Southern. Sellout crowd here. They closed the parking lot early today for the reserve parking. The fake to Peterson, the pitch. There's a fumble and a turnover. And that is what killed Georgia Southern last year. Remy Alawal, who you just mentioned, Pete, coming up with that recovery. Looked like Owalowo got it that time. They decided to force the pressure, and once again they did. And Owalowo is the kind of guy, he almost plays like he is a linebacker. Look at Hall, number 24. They have him kind of playing center field that time. Owalowo came up, comes up, really didn't hit anybody, but he just kind of confused things enough, and there he was to pick up the ball. And that would have been a pitch that would have been better kept and a loss by J.R. Revere, something he's learning in his first season as a starter. So here comes Appalachian on the attack with a two-back set. Here's the pitch. Going to try to go inside the tackle. The ball is loose. Do they roll him down? No, it's a fumble recovery for Georgia Southern. So swapping fumble recoveries right away. 
Did we tell you turnovers were going to be key in this game? Jamar Jones, he's another big one, along with Michael Ward, who already has one fumble recovery this season. Now he's got two. That's one of the dangers about the Appalachian running game, at least it can be against such a quick defense. They they pitch the ball at such a deep point in the backfield. You are often are exposing your running back to an oncoming rush if a linebacker beats his block, but then something like that happens, and a fumble almost always will occur behind the line of scrimmage. And we talked about the punishing defense at Appalachian plays. Georgia Southern delivering a lick on that point there. So it will be Georgia Southern's ball, first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. This is the kind of game that, as a football fan, you love to watch because it's like a heavyweight fight and they're swapping blows. And really, you have not only two of the three teams picked to win the league, but in terms of raw talent, these two rosters on, on both sides of the football really have the best pure talent of any team in the league. Johnson wide right, Titus Johnson to the left. Going to come to the left on the pitch. Pitch it to Peterson. There's that nice move that Peterson gives. And balls as well as receiving. Peterson that time showed you just how good a runner, why he's never rushed for fewer than 100 yards in a collegiate game. That time he was actually squeezed back in uh, out on the boundary by Phil Day, but he showed you the quickness and, and the ability to make a decision out there. They rely on him to make a lot of decisions. The option game they play is all based on getting numbers on the defense, but when Appalachian does that and puts a lot of white shirts around where he's going, he has to create some, and he did just that. A great statistic on Peterson is Yak, yards after contact. And he showed it right there. All right. Georgia Southern with another first down. Man in motion to the far side. They'll give it to Peterson again, but Appalachian's left side of the defense does a great job at smelling that one out. And with this kind of team, with that kind of talent, Peterson, you have to be honest between the tackles with this, this club. You cannot take that for granted. Any good option team is going to first be good off the fullback dive. And with a special talent like that, I mean, you really, as a linebacker, got to be conscious that that football has been handed off. You, you can't uh, take for granted the, uh, the fullback, the dive fake. Georgia Southern will split a man wide to each side. Man in motion to the far side, but again, they give it off to Adrian Peterson, who picks up a couple of yards. You know, we talked about Adrian Peterson needing to establish himself as a runner today, but one of the things, too, we touched on is his ability to get 100 yards in almost every game. But in the quiet, secret coffee corners of Statesboro all this week, they have said if anybody can keep him under 100, they think Appalachian's defense can. Certainly. Last year, he went for a bunch, about 150 against them. Didn't score against them, though. Only four times in four games in his career has he not scored a touchdown. That's also impressive. Rolling to the right. Revere wanting to throw it. Now he's got a scramble. He'll break containment. Comes to the near side. And he's going to get hit and drop about the original line of scrimmage. He ran a lot to uh, save a little, but he did just that. J.R. Revere uh, taking over as a starter this year. They had a fine quarterback here, Greg Hill, over the past few seasons, a little bit quicker than Revere, and that was almost his signature, the broken play. Revere is kind of picking up that ability, but missing that, that half a step that Hill had at times uh, gets him uh, caught up in trouble, and that was the case right there. He runs about 65 yards on this play, but it's back and forth, and uh, great job there for it. no one to to get an illegal block and pick up a penalty. Yeah, really a super job, though, on containment. Josh Jeffries was the only linebacker on the right side of the field before others caught up to stop him and, and hold him at the line. So Georgia Southern having the punt. Scott Shelton hits one at the 20, and it'll roll out at the 19, and that's where the folks from Appalachian will start first and 10 from their own 20, from their own 19-yard line. Back with more action in this Southern Conference thriller right after this. After a couple of exchanges, it is Appalachian's ball for the second time. They fumbled on their first possession. They'll get it now on their own 19. Both teams having committed a turnover, but it hasn't hurt them yet. At this point, it's uh, pretty much been a kind of game where we've seen Georgia Southern's offense uh, try some things, especially on the corners against the Appalachian defense. And really now only the second play from scrimmage for the sophomore QB, Joe Perchette, and what is easily the toughest atmosphere he's played into this point in his career. They will hand it off deep in the backfield to Razak. 
who gets across the line of scrimmage and picks up about three, four yards on the play. Razak's an interesting story. He began his college career at Wofford, never uh, saw the field for the Terriers, decided to transfer after a brief time there, and then he moved up to Appalachian State, gained nearly 1,000 yards a year ago. On the line for Appalachian, Young at tackle, Brock at guard, Elkins at center, Patrick at guard, and Smith over in the right tackle position. And Joe Burchett, as we said, at quarterback, Kareem Razak, Neil Kortnizer, Rashid Slade, Troy Alby and Dale Wilcox. And it will be second down for Appalachian State. They have yet to move the down marker yet. The officials have the game stopped for a moment. Must be a problem with the uh, clock. Looking at the defense for Georgia Southern, Freddie Pescada, as we said. Gino Tatera, he's another load. Robert LeBlanc, who's been injured and is questionable as for how much action he will see today. Outside linebacker Michael Youngblood, Jason Neese, Michael Ward, and Jamar Jones, another outside linebacker. And really, for Georgia Southern, their outside linebackers have done very well, but their secondary has had to defend the pass. LeVar Rainey has several interceptions. Ryan Haddon, another uh, player that has come back and played very well after being out for a whole season with a leg injury. Nick Kearns and Nick Gates at the corner. For Appalachian on the offensive line, they also not only suffered a big uh, loss to their defensive line, they lost Jamie Lovern a couple of weeks ago, but Brian Metz, one of their top-notch top -notch performers, is out for a few weeks on the right side. He was a big part at tackle, and uh, we're anxious to see just what uh, what his replacement uh, does today, Wayne Smith, who is a uh, junior, but Metz is going to be missed by that offensive line. Well, the officials are talking to both clubs now as to whatever the holdup might be. Now they'll wind the clock. Jim Jackson, the referee, says, let's get started. Appalachian will split a man wide each side. Man in the slot on the left side. Georgia Southern going to walk up a linebacker on the left side. Burchett back to pass, going deep down the near side, but overthrows the intended receiver, Troy Albee. Albee was open, but stride for stride being covered there by Georgia Southern's Deion Stokes. Albee's probably their best deep threat at this point, although Rashad Slade, who was their top receiver last year, is also a guy you've got to watch out for. I'll tell you, in Appalachian's passing game, players really stepped up is a senior, Joey Gibson, who came off of what looked like a career-threatening knee injury, got one of those unique six years of eligibility, and he's really been a steady guy for him underneath, and against a speedy team like Georgia Southern, he could be as effective as anybody in that receiving court. Third down now for Appalachian. Third and about six to go. Trip formation on the left. He'll come to the right for a second to try to keep it. Tried to pitch it, but then brought it back down and almost fumbled the ball. Jerry Beard was open on the wing, and he was going to try to pitch it to it, but Georgia Southern's defense just absolutely swarmed it. As we noted earlier, Burchett is the third starting quarterback uh, they've used this season. Daniel Jeremiah, possibly their best option guy, started in their opener against Wake, got hurt, and really hasn't played much since. That was not necessarily Burchett's forte, at least at this, this point in his career, uh, when to wait and when to pitch, and that time we kind of saw that exposed. And that was Jamar Jones who really had him hemmed up. So now it will be Appalachian to punt the ball away. McKinney gets the snap. Not much of a rush, kind of a knuckleball that hits at the 40. Takes a Appalachian bounce to about the 32-yard line, and that's where Georgia Southern will put it in play first and 10. McKinney, of course, one of the, well, is the top punter in the Southern Conference and one of the best in 1AA football. And he comes from a long line of uh, fine punters they've had at Appalachian State uh, over the uh, the years. Uh, Mark Royals uh, is among them uh, and uh, many others who have gotten uh, their shot in the pros. Paul Johnson pacing the sidelines as he does. Very cool under fire, very much like Jerry Moore. Just very intense during a game, but still very much under control. Georgia Southern with the ball. First and 10 from their own 31. Again to Peterson up the middle, but making a good shoestring tackle and stopping him from getting out is Joe Best. As we uh, said, he is the guy, and that's his assignment. Make sure whatever happens, Peterson does not beat Appalachian uh, in the middle. That's his assignment, and, and a mighty tough assignment it is, to say the least. Joe Best, of course, the fourth best in the Southern Conference as far as tackles. He had 17 tackles in the game last week against Furman. Second down for Georgia Southern, about six to go. And again, they'll go with Peterson. They are doing a good job of keying on him. 
But they will, uh, Georgia Southern will try to establish him uh, first and foremost. I'll tell you a guy to watch out for, and we saw him on the opening series, Andre Weathers. He's a slot back for him, and boy, what a speedy talent he can be, and they'll, they'll run him around uh, on uh, an option uh, after they fake the dive to Peterson. And keep an eye on him. He's number 13 throughout the game. He's at the top of the line right now, moving in motion. Again, they'll hand it off to Peterson, trying to crack the right side. But in on that tackle for Appalachian was Josh Jeffries making the hit on Peterson. Not much yardage there, so here it is. Fourth and short yards for Georgia Southern with a ball at the 41-yard line. So if you're Paul Johnson, you've got a little bit of riverboat gambler in you. What kind of a call do you make here? I've got to think if you've got a high-powered offense and you've got a guy who can run over people, why not? And it appears that uh, coming up to the line of scrimmage, uh, Apparently, Appalachian may have had too many men on the field. Caught, caught in between that return uh, mode and also uh, defending the fourth down mode possible. So a penalty is going to be assessed against Appalachian here. And assuming they were going to line up and actually go for it, not just stand there and try to draw Appalachian uh, off sides, uh, really not a bad move at this point. Constitution infraction against the defense. They had 12 men on the field, and the snap was imminent. Five yards, the length of the penalty results in the first down. This rule received a great deal of scrutiny, especially after last year, because some teams were pushing the envelope a little bit by huddling up and then waiting and then finally running somebody off. And especially on the offensive side of the ball, it really wasn't meant in the spirit of the defensive side. We saw it right there. They will hand it to Peterson. He stumbles forward. And, of course, the penalty gave a first down for Georgia Southern. One of the things that's made Paul Johnson so successful is he's not afraid to try some things and you know, shift gears here and there. And that uh, potential fourth down uh, call here in the first quarter was a sign of that. Why not? You've got a high-powered offense, the best running back in the country, at least at this level. You give it a try on your home field with uh, plenty of firepower. Second down for Georgia Southern. Still in their own territory. Fake to Peterson. Revere being hemmed in there. While the folks from Appalachian playing assignment defense there. That was just a line of uh, following your assignment. Uh, Beautiful work here. Just watch down the left side uh, from our perspective. Just a wall of white jerseys and uh, leading the way, uh, number 11 on the corner, Wesleyan Hunter, the outside linebacker, who was huge last year, and then eventually also coming in, uh, Jason Soule. Jason Soule really having a great season. Leads the Southern Conference in sacks as three, and that backs up Georgia Southern to where it's now a third down and nine. So third and nine for... The Eagles, Jerry Moore making a point with the side judge. Another third down situation for the Eagles. Revere on the quarterback draw. Stutter stepping and dancing his way for about a five-yard game, but not enough for the first. And that's an example of Revere again. Uh, Greg Hill created a lot of things. Revere has the ability to do just that, and he's a scary player because off of a, off of a broken play or off of a situation where the pass coverage is so good, a guy like that can really burn you. But against such a quick defense, it's tough. Uh, that might have gone uh, for better yards against some of the other teams in this league, but not necessarily against Appalachian. So it's fourth down with the ball on the Appalachian 48. <laughs> the Eagles will split a man wide to each side. Man in motion. Nope, they're going to try to draw Appalachian offsides with their shifting around, and they'll call time. So Georgia Southern now will try to come up with a play that they think might get them the necessary yardage. And the fact that he calls time tells you they are serious about possibly trying to move the chains uh, as opposed to just taking the five and giving their punter a little more room. All right, our score is no score. It's been a tough ball game back and forth. They're swapping punches, but nobody's gone down. With 5.01 left to go in the first quarter, Georgia Southern, nothing. Five, play the, Sigma. the bald eagle himself, Irk Russell, sitting high atop his perch. He's sitting on a balcony overlooking the field. He's a man that started it all here at Georgia Southern. Still very active in the program, but in a background kind of a way. Georgia Southern elects now to punt the ball. Shelton will be punting. From his own 33, excuse me, from his own 37. And he'll get a boomer away. High spiral, they'll signal for a fair catch. It'll hit at the eight and roll out of bounds at the seven. 
But whatever they talked about in the timeout, maybe it was mentioned, hey, why don't you try to drop one inside the 10? What the heck? Let's let the defense handle things for a while. So that's the decision they go with. And again, for the second straight time, uh, the Appalachian uh, State Mountaineers begin with a not so good field position. So Scott Shelton averaging 39 yards on his punts. Pooches one there and puts Appalachian State deep in their own territory at the seven. And you'll see a rotation of running backs. They uh, really hand the ball to four guys. Razak is not the only guy that touches it. Uh. Giving it to the deep man in the backfield, Jerry Beard, and he can break it. He's at the 30. He eludes a tackle at the 40 and gets brought down at midfield. Jerry Beard, who averages five yards a carry, and he gave Furman all they could handle last week, just ripped it right up off of the right tackle. He is a transfer from Georgia Military Academy, a junior, and a guy who they may they think maybe has the best raw ability of any running back in their stable, and this run actually comes out of the eye. They simply got some good blocking right there at the uh, the front, and then Beard does the rest by himself, but a nice block uh, upfield by Joe Patrick, the right guard, as they stun it a little bit, and then Beard moving out and moving forward. Again, Beard gets the call, and he gets across the 50. Before he's knocked down, Ryan Hatton in there. And we've got a flag. You mentioned Georgia Military. Now, there's a program that's been in the junior college playoff and bowls on a number of occasions, played down in Brunswick a few years ago. Hmm. A foul, a personal foul against Georgia Southern. We'll wait and see what the call. Paul Johnson asking about it. See what Jim Jackson has to say. After the play, personal foul, defense, 15 yards, the run, automatic first down. Looks as if Paul might have even been uh, asking one of his players uh, something to the effect of, what did you do that for? Uh, on the personal foul, it came just as the, the tackle was being made, maybe even just as the whistle was being blown. So it puts the ball deep in Georgia Southern Territory at the 34. See what Joe Perchette has to, in his playbook on this one. Watch the pass, looking down the right side, has a man open at the five, down to the one. On the reception, Rashid Slade, who has 12 catches, now 13 on the season. And let's take note, this drive has happened out of the eye. Not that spread offense that Appalachian has been uh, so accustomed to using this year. Slade, a fine receiver, a simple uh, flag pattern, out pattern, and he found an opening between the two defenders. And uh, it was Georgia Southern's defense playing a little soft on that. Nick Gates kind of let him get around him. And respect for number 34 right there, Beer, is a big reason why maybe they, they played a little bit soft. They were thinking another run, maybe this time to the right side, similar to the play that went left on the other end of the field. Burchette trying it up the middle, and he's in. Touchdown. Joe Burchette right up the middle. Well, a drive in which Appalachian mixed the elements uh, that they are, are so good at doing. They... Brought one of their uh, running backs out. He did uh, a number uh, getting the ball out of their own territory, and then the, uh, the clutch pass to get it close. And just like that, the Mountaineers have struck first blood. Beard and Slade and Burchett all combining to make this one a 6-0 lead right now for Appalachian. Mark Wright to attempt the extra point. There's a snap. It's down. The kick is up, and it's good. So with four minutes left to go in the first period of play, Appalachian State 7, Georgia Southern nothing. Yes, here at Paulson Stadium, a guesstimate of about 20,000 on hand. Eric Rockhold set to kick it off for Appalachian following their drive. The one-yard plunge by quarterback Burchett. And the point after touchdown is put up in front, 7-0. From the 7, Georgia Southern takes the kickoff and returns it to the 26 or 27-yard line. Appalachian uh, confusing things a little bit with the, uh, the offensive set. Nothing that Georgia Southern 
wasn't expecting. They knew that the Mountaineers would go into the eye at certain points, but again, that was not their uh, mode of operation a week ago against Furman, or for that matter, for most of the season. Four plays, 93 yards, and 53 seconds. Not not a bad day at the office. Scary indeed, because out of the conventional set, boom, they strike like lightning. That's something you expect them to do out of a wide open attack. All right, let's see what Georgia Southern puts together here. J.R. Revere under quarter, under center, takes a snap, fakes to Peterson, comes to the outside, makes a good maneuver, gets across the 45 to the 44. Boy, Corey Hall was on the verge of knocking Revere down, and someone just clipped him, but that's the guy that they're going to use maybe to the right and maybe a wallow to the left. Uh, Hall is a, is a big guy. He's number 24 in the secondary. Revere that time saw him coming and has to wonder how he didn't get hit, but somehow uh, he missed and uh, got positive yards out of it. Revere, much like his uh, predecessor, uh, Greg Hill, has a way of kind of turning sideways <laughs> and making you miss. Making himself invisible at times. Georgia Southern with a man split wide to the right. They'll go to the right with a handoff to Peterson. It gets plugged up outside, so he cuts it back inside to the 40. Adrian Peterson. I, I talked to him the other day, and I said, Adrian, how can a guy so mean on Saturday have such a great smile? He's he's just a really great young man and very personable and with his speech impediment that he has had, he has worked very hard to be very good with interviews and the media and has come light years. Sure, man, he's a super kid, and as you noted, uh, uh, really great away from the field. There's a lot of things uh, throughout the uh, university and the community, and he and J.R. Revere are great buddies, too, so it's really very close. a teamwork thing back there. Take to Peterson, wanting to pass, looking down the near sideline, underthrown and intercepted by Corey Hall. And they talked at a last-minute change of moving Corey Hall to that position. And that time as a, he was assigned to the running back. And the, the thing that makes Corey Hall so awesome, not only his great speed, but he's a big kid, 6'4", uh, huge, and huge really for a cornerback. But uh, when you get him in a one-on-one -on -one cover situation, he can do just that to you. Under throw, especially throw into a smaller running back, and you're going to get beaten that way. Now, Revere has a tendency to maybe stay in the pocket a little bit better, step up in the pocket uh, better than the quarterback they had here last year. But that time, uh, simply underthrown and underthrowing it to the wrong defender. Trying to hit Myers, but it was underthrown, and Corey Hall comes up with his second interception of the year. So, back on offense goes Appalachian State. Man in motion, they're going to hand it to him. This is a play they used to their advantage last week. Albee going to take it around the left side and gets up across the 35 to about the 37 before he's brought down. Albee, a guy with some fine speed. He can play a little bit of running back, but primarily a wide receiver these days and uh, the athletic kind of player comparable to what uh, Georgia Southern has and Andre Weathers in terms of a perimeter guy. And that time, great block in the backfield. Then he gets out on the boundary. Pretty good containment work, though, by uh, the defender uh, for the uh, Eagles, uh, Nate Gates, a transfer from LSU to at least contain things to the point where he ran him out of bounds. And a good job of spreading the field out and good timing on that play by Appalachian. Burchett under center takes it, slides down the line, cuts it up himself across the 40 to the 41-42. He'll have a first down. One of the advantages of having a quarterback who's 6-4 is when you need just a few yards for a first round, first down, as was the case there, just get him near the line of scrimmage, and if he falls forward in the right way, he'll get you the yards you need. But uh, the big guy is tough to take down, and he gets a few more on his own. Back a little to, over pursuit by Robert LeBlanc there. Gave him that crease to cut back up in. So it is a first down for Appalachian State from their own 41-yard line. A deep handoff to Beard. He breaks it again. He's up to midfield. Very similar to a run he had earlier. And he's a guy, he likes to put pads on pads. Razak is more of an elusive guy, but Beard's the kind of guy that uh, likes to pop people, doesn't mind uh, taking the pops uh, himself. And a great example of it there is he bounces out near another first down. Gino Tatera feeling the sting of the pop by Mr. Beard. 147 remaining in the first quarter. No score, or 7 nothing. our score, Appalachian in the lead. And they've obviously determined that against a speed team like Georgia Southern, using a lot of eye is the thing to do, although now they're back in the spread. Got that one back set there. Faking the handoff, play action, looking over the middle, incomplete, just overthrown over the outstretched fingertips of Joey Gibson. On the coverage for Georgia Southern, LeVar Rainey, who already has four interceptions of his own. Burchett's a Q QB uh, prototype in terms of throwing it downfield. Loves to go north to south with the ball. He's got a 
a great looking throw from the pocket and, and being so big he can hang in there and make it difficult uh, on the uh, secondaries because he he's not afraid to wait uh, to the last minute. Incomplete pass stops the clock with a minute 25 a big third down play for Appalachian looking into the eyes of the quarterback from the defensive perspective again the beard he finds the hole he's across the 40. What a job by the front of Appalachian does there to blow open a canyon for beard to explode through. And it was Ryan Haddon in on the stop. Beard, a punishing runner himself. Appalachian with the, uh, well, they actually blocked down that time. Uh, and look at the hole they opened. And so Haddon having to come up from his free safety position to make that tackle. Almost a zone blocking approach that Appalachian takes quite a bit. And it's real tough to defend the, the interior run when, when you have a team doing that to you. They'll pitch it deep. Coming to the right side. And being hit and dropped. After not much gain on that one. On the carry is Jimmy Watkins. He averages four yards a carry. David Young on the stop. Appalachian has enough speed on the outside that you have to respect that. Southern was doing right here, and as a result, they turned uh, Watkins back in. But that's what allows, just like the play before, for the uh, linemen to, to make a hole like that because you're so worried about their corners. Maybe you have to worry about their perimeter more than you do if you're Appalachian's uh, defense on Georgia Southern. Gibson wide to the left, Slade in the slot on the left. Two back formation, taking play action, looking over the middle. It is complete at the 22 to a wide open Joey Gibson with his 20th catch of the year. Gibson, one of the top ten receivers in the Southern Conference. And that's because he gets underneath defenses so well, and what you throw at him, you can be pretty sure it's going to be reeled in. Here it's a simple curl back in, and again, the you're, you're worried if you're the defense about guys like Slade and Albee, but there's Gibson, Mr. Reliable, in man coverage, and he got to inside of, uh, of the defender Gates. Gates again playing a little soft, playing off, and I'm sure that'll be something that they'll talk about at halftime. All right, our first quarter has come to an end. And score-wise, it's all Appalachian State. Thanks to that man right there on the one-yard plunge. As Appalachian leads Georgia Southern after one period of play, seven to nothing. One quarter in the books. It's a seven nothing Appalachian State lead over Georgia Southern as we get ready to start the second quarter. Again, they seat you on the grass here at Paulson when the stadium gets filled. Folks actually have reserved seats in the stands, but they like to sit on the grass. Beautiful atmosphere for a game. What a beautiful day we have. Just the blue sky and perfect October weather. It'll be Appalachian's ball, first and 10 from the Georgia Southern 22. Man in motion to the near side. Now he'll stop at the end. On the delayed handoff to running back. Gets inside the 20. Watkins on the carry. On the carry, number 32, Jimmy Watkins. Picks up a couple of yards on the play. Georgia Southern is third best in the league against the run. They're the top defensive team overall, so the fact that Appalachian moved down the field in its first quarter scoring drive in 53 seconds on them and now has moved well uh, really says something for what the Mountaineers are doing offensively. But in that first quarter, some impressive numbers racked up so far by the Appalachian offense. Albee wide to the right, Slade wide left. Single back in the backfield, dropping back to pass. Burchett looking, he's going to get pressured. He's held down by one leg and then finally dropped. <laughs> and Freddie Pescato said, you aren't going anywhere, buddy. I'm hanging on to you. It's like he uh, was climbing a tree right there, starting down at the, uh, the trunk and moving on up. And Burchett, as you pointed out in the opening, is no tiny fella. He, he's he got a couple of tree trunks for legs. 6'4 and 235, mind you. So you're basically trying to tackle a tall linebacker, which is why when your guy is strong as Pescata is, third it might down. even take you uh, an extra second or two. But just enough. And again, Burchett will stay in that pocket. He doesn't have the happy feet. and Almost uh, tossed one off to the, to the safety valve. Probably the biggest play as far as down and yardage goes for Appalachian in the game so far. Third and 12. Back to pass. Right side complete, but was he out of bounds? Yes. And one foot out of bounds. It was a pass complete to Daniel Wilcox, who has 21 catches on the season, but that one foot was out of bounds, and you can see it on the replay here. 
Good blocking up front. It was a super, and they also kept uh, Razak home to help out, but uh, Georgia Southern was certainly playing the pass, and, you know, Wilcox wasn't even near the uh, the first uh, down uh, marker, nowhere near it at that point, so he Good. was the Good. underneath option. Good job by the man in the black and white right on the sticks. So it's a fourth down, and it looks like a field goal attempt coming up for Appalachian State. This one will be a 42-yarder. One for two is Mark Wright from this distance. High snap, handled well, the kick is up. It is no good. He missed it to the left. So Georgia Southern dodges a ball. Mark Wright's troubles this year have pretty much come wide to the left. He's uh, been an up and down guy in his first year handling the, uh, the duties. And this time with really not a whole lot of wind factoring in, he simply pulls it at the distance, but uh, a little bit uh, off uh, to the left side. A good leg, but it just hooked to the left. So now Georgia Southern takes over. First and 10 from their own 25. Now, what will they do with this newfound momentum? Well, and momentum has to be shifting over. They dodged a bullet there. There's the little twirl. Revere on the late pitch to Peterson at the 35 to the 36 on the carry. The beauty of that was uh, Revere able to hang on to the ball long enough so that the uh, the safety had to remain uh, loyal to the fact that Revere could cut it back against the grain. That's his responsibility at that part of the field. Therefore, Hall had to lay back and said did not commit that time. Watch Corey Hall and also the other pursuit. See, Revere hangs on to it so long. The other thing is you get uh, Peterson taking the footballs. He's moving downhill, running into the ball, and that uh, adds to his talent. With his momentum, certainly. A first down for Georgia Southern. Again, they hand it off to Peterson, who gets across the 40 to the 41. And you see that the defense is making that attempt to arm tackle. Joe Best reached in there with that right arm, going to try to strip Peterson of the ball. That's what Appalachian does. They try to be opportunistic, and again, they play with a lot of, mo of motion. It seems like they play this game with uh, as much emotion as uh, any, and that was uh, a big part of it uh, last year for them. Well, he's Peterson's halfway to so his 100 mark. Yeah, really, uh, in terms of being uh, shut down, that has not been the case so far, and he's certainly getting plenty of work. Derek Owens wide to the left. Titus Johnson wide right. An audible at the line being called by Revere now. Makes... Pitches late to Weathers. Can he get outside? No. <laughs> the great defensive play, staying at home, Corey Hall. And what a smart move by the defensive coaches to move him at the last minute to that position. Although it may not have been as last minute as we know. I was going to say. Yeah. We were told at the last minute. Yeah, we were told last minute. That, that decision may have been made sometime uh, this summer. But Hall, it's really phenomenal to see it. He's, he's basically a fifth linebacker out there, especially in, in the situations where the option develops. Uh, and that time, he essentially, once he sees that pitch, you can almost just see him dart to where the football goes in the pitch. Has to remain loyal to Revere until it happens. And let's just see if uh, Georgia Southern doesn't try to expose that here in the upcoming plays. Third down and about six to go. Back to pass. Revere looking to the right side. It is complete. At midfield and on to the 46-yard line with the catch. Andre Weathers, his 12th catch of the year. The 5'9 junior. And Georgia, Georgia Southern can go to the passing game. They did that against Chattanooga a few weeks ago, and this is not a team that's afraid to put it up, even though you would think of them more of a running attack. Good protection by the offensive line. And as a slot back, you can you can find that uh, that area underneath the defense where they're watching more as the wide receivers go down. Through. Revere sees the plug to the right side, tries to go back the other way, and gets knocked down at the 50. He will lose about three yards on the plug. Appalachian is very steady linebacking play, and if you have even the slightest hesitation near the line of scrimmage, they will expose you. That group of Severns and uh, Bess and uh, Hunter, uh, really an experienced bunch and a very quick bunch. Well, Georgia Southern has been a big play kind of an offense all year long. A great many of their drives take under a minute or two minutes at the most. Certainly 58 seconds is what Appalachian took on their scoring drive in this game. And they're used to leading games. They've outscored opponents by 100 points this year in the first half alone. Throwing back to the right side, complete to Johnson. And he's hit, and the ball's loose, and Georgia Southern will come at the 49. And double heroic work right there by Paul Collins, that true freshman, getting the starting assignment today. They moved him out off the snap. He provided some blocking for the throwback, and then he's the one who falls in the football. Watch it on the replay. Johnson had it. 
In comes back and didn't get stripped of the ball, and there's Collins diving on. Yeah, good to see a lineman with the uh, the nose for the football right there. Oh, yeah. So the fumble recovery doesn't really hurt. It's not a great amount of yardage on the pickup, but Georgia Southern now third and 12. And again, to pass. Going along down the near side. Wide open is Anthony Williams. No, he's out of bounds. I don't know if he would have been able to catch it inbounds even if he's gotten his uh, hands on it and pulled it in, but something Appalachian hasn't done so far is any kind of stunting in, in the drop back uh, scenarios. Uh, they probably feel they don't need to, and it's uh, dangerous uh, to do it against such a good and quick QB like Revere. That time, he did have the time to throw, and I don't think he, I don't know if he would have been in bounds had he, had he reeled it in. So it will be Georgia Southern to punt the ball away. Shelton standing on his own, 37. And a timeout is called by Appalachian State. Impressive uh, work by Appalachian, as we noted in the first quarter. And up to this point, 132 total yards to Georgia Southern, 72. Uncustomary for the Eagles, to say the least. So with a timeout on the field, we'll take one to our score. Appalachian State, seven, Georgia Southern, nothing. 9.46 to go in the first half. Center. There's a look at the national championship flag from last year and four more to go along with it. Last year, the theme was a drive for five. Georgia Southern leading in time of possession, 13.32 to Appalachian, 6.42. Shelton ready to punt. Gets a high snap and handles it. And gets kind of a wobbly kick away off the side of his foot. Shelton, who's been averaging 39 yards a punt, will have his average hurt by that one. Looks like he was trying for the old coffin corner, but caught it a little bit too far to the right side. And, and that then, time of possession shows you, and especially teams that use a spread offense, not that Appalachian's really gone with that too much today, but in this day and age, unless you're an option team, you really aren't worried too much about time of possession. You know, you're worried about moving the football and moving the chains, getting the points, but uh, you will find uh, some of your more successful teams these days are, are outnumbered in time of possession. Well, if it doesn't take you long to score, you don't have to have the ball very long. 9.40 to go in the first half. You worry about, uh, you don't worry about time possession, you worry about your defense's conditioning. Exactly. The handoff deep in the backfield and rolled up and knocked down at the 37. Tatera on the tackle and Beard, who had some wide open holes on a couple of plays earlier, really didn't go much of anywhere there. And good pursuit by the uh, the defensive front that time by Georgia Southern. They probably were just uh, talked about about some of those holes that Appalachian was uh, providing on that last series and the earlier. Jamar Jones came up from the outside linebacking slot right there. Second down, a pickup of about two on the play. They want to pass right side. It is complete at the 45. The is complete to number two. And it should be enough for a first down for Appalachian. Dropping the uh, snap is Burchett, but showing the poise. And that was a play you can tell that was designed just to get a first down. They probably said, let's run, uh, let's run. I'll be out there, get the ball to him, move it up. And uh, they'll feel more comfortable operating, obviously, closer to the 50. A little bit more room now. Man in motion to the near side, and they're going to hand it off to him again. Here comes Albee, left side. Georgia Southern's defense trying to string him out and knocks him out of bounds at the 48. LeVar Rainey's speed that time showing up. He came across the field to make the stop. That time, uh, I'll be put in a situation where he really had two men to beat, and uh, Rainey was able to come in uh, when he was slowed up. Game this play, uh, again, they, they've they run this now a couple of times, and uh, with all the RD on the run when he takes the handoff, he really gets the Jets going. But Rainey step for step with him down the line. So it's second down, about four on the play. Again, the man in motion. Rolling right, wanting to pass. Going to pull it up and run with it, but he's going to get dropped. On the tackle, Jamar Jones. There's Jones again, listed as an outside linebacker, but he's more like a defensive end with some nice quickness, and he fought off a block by Rizakwin right over top of him and was there to uh, stop Burchett. 
loss Here's of about one yard on the play, and you can see how it developed here. Sure. Watch Razak, uh, number 13, moving. He's supposed to provide that, that wall uh, for a little bit longer than that, but uh, Jones would have nothing to do with it. So it's third down and eight for the Mountaineers of Appalachian, and they're going to put a trips formation to the left. Georgia Southern fans on their feet trying to make a little noise. Looking to pass near side. It is incomplete at the 45 yard line. Trying to find the hands of Joey Gibson. And the ball just about hit him in the head as he slipped, turning, trying to turn around to catch it. Yeah. Burchett had to get rid of it, and he threw, a, he threw a pretty smart ball that was in a position where really only Gibson could get his hands on it. No one could step in front and make the pick. He had to stay low with it, but that time Gibson couldn't reel it in. Georgia Southern set to receive the punt. Anthony Williams, the lone man standing at the 10. There's a good snap. The kick. Fair catch signal for and made at the 22. 25 yard punt, no return. So no return on that as Anthony Williams used the fair catch. I think now he wishes he had maybe tried to run with it. He had a little bit of room. Nothing worse than when you signal for a fair catch and you suddenly realize you're the only one standing within a 10 yard area. So Georgia Southern gets the ball on their 22. They've not had great field position. Appalachian has been able to keep the offense of Georgia Southern in a hole when they've not been able to move the ball. J.R. Revere on the twirl, the late pitch to Peterson. He's knocked out of bounds at the 27. Best doing just what he's supposed to do. Joe Best, number 43, the linebacker, saw what was happening, did not buy the fake on the twirl and went right with Peterson and shadowed him over to the sideline. And let's say Joe Best is doing the absolute best job of shadowing Peterson so far this season. Yeah. He really uh, is, is doing a fine job. And again, Peterson pulled off uh, a monster numbers once again. When you go for 150 yards against a Georgia team in the first right. game of the year, right. even though Georgia maybe didn't have some of its defensive starters in there because of suspensions, the point is Georgia Southern's front line wasn't uh, intact at that point either. Revere with the fake. Gage outside. He is across the 45 to the 46 before he is dragged down from behind by Wesleyan Hunter. He is the player that last year broke the hearts of Georgia Southern fans as he recovered a fumble. 21 yards on the carry. There's a nice fake and he turns it up. Weathers with a block there to just get in the way, but then run down from behind by Hunter. And they got out and you notice Hall didn't make a direct pursuit. He was at the tail end of the play, so they got out and they caused some interference in the secondary. And that's that's how you counter a team shooting to the uh, to the boundary when your quarterback can cut up the field like that. JR again fakes, pitches it on the corner, getting out across the 40 to the 42. A great run there by Georgia Southern's Dream Walden. And this is a last minute addition to the depth chart because of his speed. Georgia Southern feeling they had to use some speed to beat Appalachian. And that's what they do just there. Beautiful block on the uh, corner and uh, Hall was the guy who had to make the stop and he does, but watch what they do. Getting the uh, the block right uh, there and then uh, Walden takes it uh, again, heading uh, north to south and picks up some nice yardage. J.R. Revere doesn't like what he sees as he comes up to the line, so he is gonna call a timeout. And so with 7.02 left to go in the first half, Georgia Southern trying to play catch up here as Appalachian leads seven to nothing. It's a homecoming crowd at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. And it is a election year. Yeah. Some folks have that on their mind, even though it's homecoming. Yeah. Two different campaigns in the mind, that of the Eagles for their fans and, and others elsewhere. Wide open, Chris Johnson at the five. He'll stumble in the end zone. Touchdown. Lightning strikes back. Johnson has a knack of getting wide open. That is his sixth touchdown via the pass. His 14th catch of the year, the junior, excuse me, the senior, coming up with a big catch here. Off play action. See Hall, he was going to watch uh, what Peterson was going to do, thinking he had the ball, and simply uh, obliterating the uh, the coverage uh, of Justin Severns, a linebacker. Talk about a mismatch, the speedy Johnson on the outside linebacker. Severns, who is a guy who can play, has played some defensive back, but still uh, not a match for that kind of speed, and he was beaten. It'll be Rob Baronas to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Mr. Johnson, who just caught the pass. 
The snap. It's up. It's good. So with 6.57 left to go in the first half, we're back to ground zero. Appalachian State 7, Georgia Southern 7. J.R. Revere entering this game had thrown seven touchdowns over his past three games, which may not be that impressive, but when you consider Georgia Southern and their running success over the years, that is an interesting stat. So now he's got eight TD passes in the past three games and a quarter and a half. So certainly an element they're adding in to the attack. And Chris Johnson, who two years ago left the game on a stretcher and had broken a leg and missed the remainder of that season, came back strong last year after a great rehab program by the sports medicine people at Georgia Southern and certainly has not lost any steps or any speed as he's wide open on that pattern. And that's a play that Georgia Southern has used a number of times. I'm sure Appalachian saw that on the film. I'm sure all the opponents have seen Johnson open on that route. Yeah, that's the kind of play when you use a guy like Hall as your safety primarily to guard the run and to guard Peterson on the corner and, and Revere uh, cutting up against you. That's where you can expose the, uh, the defense and the passing game. We're in the thick of football season, but basketball practice for NCAA teams began last night. Yep. At halftime, we'll talk a little bit about the Southern Conference basketball tournament coming up, and we'll also talk with the athletic director of Georgia Southern, Sam Baker, as he talks about a new facility that's being built on Georgia Southern's campus. The kickoff will go to the six, to the 10, and nail down at the 17 yard line. Well, Georgia Southern has done just what we thought they might after that missed field goal attempt by Appalachian State. Looked like the Mountaineers might go up by two scores. They could not convert any points, and right back come the Eagles to get the game even and get this crowd back into it. So the homecoming crowd is on their feet and very much Your alive into this game now. With 6.47 left to go in the first half, Jerry Moore saying, all right, guys, let's go back and get it. Burchett looking over a six-man front, fumbles the football. Did the blue shirts fall on it? Yes. I think they're going to credit Nate Gates with that fumble recovery, number one for the Eagles. The center and quarterback exchange has been trouble throughout the day for Appalachian. A couple of plays on the uh, last offensive series, Burchett was able to pick the ball up and, uh, and go on with the play, but that time, what an inopportune time to have that happen. So much of what goes on between a center and a quarterback is rhythm. When you're trans Elating that into the usage of three different quarterbacks and different centers, sometimes that rhythm gets broken. It really can, and that's a great example of it right there. Georgia Southern back on offense, man in motion. Fake to Peterson, Revere trying to keep it, but he can't get outside. Great backside pursuit by Joe Best. And that time with uh, Hall to, to guard his backside, if you will, Best able to shoot up and now put some pressure on Revere, and that may be the philosophy since on the previous series, Georgia Southern started to use Revere to go back against the green. You can stuff that Best with the closest man to pursuit, and that would be Best in that situation. We knew this was going to be a great ball game, and we're knotted up at 7-7. It's like we haven't taken a snap. Georgia Southern with the ball, seeing if they can capitalize now on a fumble recovery with the ball sitting at the 15-yard line. Johnson wide to the left. They give it to Peterson. He goes off left tackle, still fighting his way to the 10 and then knocked back. Wes Hunter held on for dear life that time to pull Peterson back to the pack. And Appalachian's defense, of course, no slouch. While Georgia Southern leads in most of the league's categories, Appalachian is second in the three key statistics against the run, against the pass, and uh, total defense. And again, those linebackers, Hunter and Best and Severns, as we've noted, a big, big part of that, along with Paul and Awalowo in the second. Half. And Hunter, as we said, uh, very key in last year's win up in Boone. Third down for Georgia Southern. Fake to Peterson. Pump. And he's not going to get the pass off. He's going to get hit and drop. On the tackle, John Menino. John Menino stepping up that time. And talk about making some big plays with your backs to the wall. That's just what Appalachian defense has done. They stuff uh, Revere here. And even with the man in motion and two running backs into block for him off the, the backside comes Menino. So some super coverage downfield and some pressure also applied that time up the middle by Best. So it will be an attempted field goal. This one to be attempted by Rob Baronis. 
It'll be a 30-yard attempt. The officials call time for a moment. See what the call is. Nope. Now they're ready. Baronis on the field. Baronis from the 30-yard attempt. The ball will be spotted at the 20 by Chris Johnson. A good snap. The kick is up. It is good. With 4.41 left to go in the first half. Georgia Southern has eaten ahead of the Mountaineers of Appalachian by a score of 10 to 7. They at least get points out of their drive down close. So Appalachian forced to uh, come back and respond. And keep in mind, that man, Paul Johnson, this is his 50th game as the head coach of Georgia Southern. When his teams have led at the half, for that matter, at the end of the third quarter, he has not lost. Well, he's only lost seven games uh, in his uh, two and a half seasons. He split the uprights with that one. And right down uh, the middle. The win really not much of a factor at all. Uh, if anything, maybe slightly uh, to the back of the kicker that time, but really not uh, not a factor today. Well, Paul Johnson, having gotten his master's at App Appalachian in science, figures this is a scientific game of inches and sort of uh, outthinking the other. And right now, his thinking has gotten his team up by three. That loss to Appalachian last year really stuck in his craw because he grew up not far from the campus in Boone, North Carolina. So he knows all about uh, the Mountaineers. And uh, keep in mind, too, as we noted earlier on, he has uh, just uh, one team in which uh, he has a losing record against in this conference. He is one and two coming into today against these Mountaineers, and those are the only two Southern Conference losses during the Paul Johnson era. An interesting quote following last week's win up at Western Carolina after the game. He was asked about this game, Appalachian, and Paul Johnson said, they don't like us, we don't like them. It should be a great game. Yeah, certainly. It's developed into one of the really great robberies uh, in the league since uh, Georgia Southern came in a few years back. Uh, great personnel and uh, great coaching on both sides of the Here's the kickoff the following the field goal, and this one will go out of the end zone. I would say that Mr. Momentum is wearing blue and white right now. Appalachian earlier this season played Troy State, a team that would move to number one after beating the Mountaineers. And in the first half, early on, Appalachian dominated a very talented Troy State team. But Troy eventually uh, slowed down that momentum on the road and beat Appalachian in their own ballpark. Well, now the Mountaineers, if the uh, momentum's gotten away, it's going to be even harder for them to grab uh, here in front of a certainly uh, mostly unfriendly crowd. So it is on the 20 where Appalachian will begin their next drive for points. They will split Albee wide to the right. The pitch deep in the backfield to Rizak, who turns the corner at the 30, at the 40, run down from behind at the 47. Yeah, the amazing thing about Razak is they pitch the ball to him so deep in the backfield. Similar to what Furman does with uh, their fine runner, Lewis Ivory. And then Razak's able to get the turn. They have some great blocking out of the boundary, and he's able to get upfield with them. Michael Ward will make a great tackle to save the touchdown here. Lots of room for Razak to run. Super blocked by Wayne Smith and some others there on the right corner, though, to make that wall happen. And Razak does have that speed to bust it up the sideline. And again, he's more of a make you miss kind of guy, whereas Beard is more of a he'll run into you and try to bounce off you. 425 remaining in the first half. 10-7 Georgia Southern in the lead. Appalachian on the move at their own 48. This time the handoff to Beard. Gets across midfield into Gary Georgia Southern Beard territory. I know they go with a lot of one back uh, sets, but I'm almost surprised with two running backs that are both fast and yet at the same time uniquely different. Why they might even give you a pro set or a beer look every so often because they that time again, you're worried about a guy like Beard in the corner, but also powering up the middle on you. Michael Ward doing a good job there to fight off that block and make that tackle. Second down and six for Appalachian, this time out of the shotgun. And whistles as soon as the ball is snapped. Flag on the play. Stopping the clock with 3.39 to go. See what Jim Jackson calls. Before the play, false start offense. Five yards previous spot, still first down. Someone on the offensive line for the Mountaineers moved. And that'll back them up five. And note they went into the shotgun, having been under center quite a bit uh, up to this point in the game. And that's the effect they have. That, that center quarterback exchange, though, obviously a point of conversation when they went back to the sideline last time. And 
you wonder if going to the shotgun maybe has a little bit of something to do with uh, that has something to do with that. Last week, the shotgun was used very effectively against Furman by Appalachian. I'm sure they're going to try to go to it a little bit more as the game goes on, as they do it on this play as well. Looking over the middle, it is complete at the 48-yard line to Kareem Razak. That's another big catch for him. Gives him 20 on the season. Not enough for a first down, but Gain of five. a pickup of five on the floor. Clock running. Just at three minutes to go in the first half. Third down, and now they really looks like a six yards to go. Third and six. Again, out of the shotgun. Georgia Southern showing a five-man front. They'll let it go to the near side. It is complete at the 40 to the 39. Gibson making the catch. Georgia Southern making the tackle was Deion Stokes. What a valuable receiver Gibson is in that kind of situation. Just slanting in, getting the to the first down marker, and you can zip the ball right in there on him. Nothing fancy about that. Nope. One, one hit step of the line of scrimmage and go to a point. And it's basically throw to a point, go to a point. Put yourself between the ball and the defender and make the catch again. Out of the shotgun. They've got four receivers to the right side. Again, going to let it go to the left side. Complete at the 30. Out of bounds at the 21. Rizak again with the catch. And he was on the move from the far right side and came a drag pattern right across the middle of the field. They moved everyone out, and they isolated Razak on the uh, free safety, Ryan Hatton, and he was able to sneak past him, has that quick step, and simply outran him when he got the football and was uh, several steps ahead of him. So Appalachian moving at will down the field against Georgia Southern. The ball resting on the GSU 21-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Mountaineers of Appalachian, who trail 10-7 with 2.17 to go in the ballgame in the first half. Jet back to pass. He's thinking about running. Now he waits till a man gets open. Intercepted Georgia Southern. David Young with his second interception of the year. And what has to, the coaches upstairs for Appalachian, who could see that play developing, must be cringing because it looks like, and we'll watch it here, that Bur Burchett had some room to at least move it downfield just on his own, maybe get a few yards. Chances are if he takes off right there, he would have uh, would have gotten a few steps past the uh, the oncoming uh, linebacker, Jason Neese, but instead a nice athletic move by the defender to step in front of the ball, and David Young, a big pick. That interception very reminiscent to one that was made last week against Furman that ended Furman's last drive in the fourth quarter. So the shoe on the other foot now. Georgia Southern starting deep in their own territory. The handoff to Peterson. He wiggles his way to the 10. So twice now deep in uh, Georgia Southern territory, not necessarily into the red zone too far, but Appalachian coming away with no points. And again, Georgia Southern getting a field goal after recovering a fumble. So in this battle of who can capitalize on a mistake, Georgia Southern leads that battle one up. Jerry Moore talking to his coaches, trying to compress that defense a little bit. Again, right up the middle they go. J.R. Revere faking the handoff and keeping it up the middle. He had one of those holes reminiscent to the one Beard had. Super seam blocking that time. The Hunter was in line to come in and make the tackle, but they were able to uh, seal him off. And that enabled uh, Revere to cut up against the Grant. The exciting thing about the option uh, is the quarterback, so many different things can happen in about a second and a half from the time he takes the snap uh, of the football. And that's, uh, that's what's so neat about watching an option work and when it works well. A minute 18 to go in the first half. Handing it off straight up the middle. A tough fight for about three or four yards. Adrian Peterson on, Peterson the, carry. on the carry as he gets to the 20-yard line. Gain of three by Peterson. And Peterson, a while back when we checked the stats, said it was a 12 carries, right 55 runner. yards. He's moved up on those numbers a week ago. Appalachian shut down the league's leading rusher, Lewis Ivory, who was averaging a phenomenal number, well above 150 yards a game. They held him to just 58. Up to 73 yards now on 16 carries. And Jerry Moore will tell you it's two different ball games, though, stopping a guy like Ivory, who takes a pitch off of a, a deep uh, in the backfield situation, as opposed to Peterson, who's a fullback and takes the hand off closer to the line. They'll put a man in motion to the near side, but they'll hand it off to Peterson, and he's still on his feet, dragging people with him across to the 27. 
What an effort. And those yards after carry is so important in uh, the way that Adrian Peterson gets the job done. It is an up for a Georgia Southern first down. It'll move the chains. And the clock running under 30 seconds. Bit of a trap play, and as a result, uh, they just got enough of the uh, defender to get Peterson to step past him. And then he gets several more yards on his own. Dragging people with him. Georgia Southern will split a man wide to each side. Back to pass. Revere, backside pressure. He's hit, and the ball comes out. They say he was in the act of passing. He got a little spinal tap on that one. Josh Jeffries was the guy who was sealed off on the previous play, so he was hungry. He wanted something that time, and boy, he comes with a flourish from the blind side and just about took him down and uh, caused a, what would have been a fumble, but as you can see, the arm was moving forward. Boy, Jeffrey is a, a big guy to have hit you like uh, that uh, at full speed, 6'2 and 265. Revere, uh, outfielder with a baseball team, probably feels like he ran into the center field wall making a catch. Again, they hand it off to Peterson. He picks his holes up to the 36-yard line before he's brought down, and the clock will expire on that play. So we played a half in this 1-double-A matchup, and Georgia Southern leads Appalachian State 10 to 7 here at halftime. Any surprises here in the first half? I think the uh, the most surprising thing is is the manner in which Appalachian State went back and forth from the spread to the eye and they uh, at times made a very good Georgia Southern defense look a step slower against that run. We have some interviews coming up at halftime. We invite you to stay with us. Georgia Southern 10, Appalachian State 7. We're at halftime the goal line for Appalachian. Ready to receive the second half kickoff. Georgia Southern looking into the sun. It'll hit at the 17, be picked up at the 10. To the 20, to the 25, hit and dropped at the 31. Troy Hoyle on the return from the seven. Hold the football now has to be the theme for the Mountaineers. The really one bad exchange between the center seven. and the quarterback away from this game being a tie ball game. That time all they watch, uh, picks it up on the, uh, the bounce, takes the knuckleball. Watches this play unfold. He sees the holes, he cuts back against the green. For a moment, though, that ball gets exposed, and right there as they try to strip it, it uh, could have been a dangerous situation. And that would really have shifted the momentum to the color of blue and white on that one. All right, it's Appalachian with the ball from their own 30. They'll pitch it deep to Razak, trying to turn the corner. Georgia Southern's defense trying to string him up, but he's going to pick up nine. Good work on the lead blocking at that time. Neil Kornatz, or a fullback who really hasn't touched the ball a whole lot this season, got out and got uh, some positive yardage uh, for Kareem Razak by uh, getting into his man. And so it is a second down and two to go for Appalachian. Eight, second down and two. Both coaches, both Jerry Moore and Paul Johnson, excellent at making halftime adjustments. And in the game of college football, that's so, so important. And note Beard and Razak on the field at the same time in the eye. They're going to hand it off up the middle to Beard. He tries the right side. He gets right to the first down marker and gets bounced backwards. See what sort of a spot they give him. Nope, no first down. The ball straddling the 40. That time using Beard as a classic fullback set and just uh, unable to elude some nice pursuit by the defense. Pretty play by Gino Chatera coming across and getting around the anchors. Georgia Southern's defense asking their fans to get behind him now on a third and inches call for Appalachian. A man wide to the left. Two back set. Again, going to give it to Beard deep in the backfield. He gets the first down as he gets across the 40 to the 41. They hit him, but his momentum caused him to spin off of the tackle and fall down at the 41. Well, I don't know about that spot, though. That is oh. closer back to the 40. That's a... Now watch here. Beard needed about a yard and a half, and again, a deep handoff that time. Cornets were lined up as a fullback. Beard was a tailback. Yeah, with a 6-4 quarterback, and again, it's not like it was third and inches, but you had about a yard or so to go, but still with a big quarterback, I'm surprised they wouldn't try to lean more into the line of scrimmage to get it that way, use his height a little bit. The spot not as favorable from down on the field as it was from up here. Fourth and inches for Appalachian. Burchett on the carry. They stack him up. The Georgia Southern defense thinks they've stopped him. If they give him forward progress, though, I don't know. This spot this time is going to be crucial because it appeared it is 
at his farthest lunge forward. He had indeed gotten the first down as he was uh, laying across. That was the time they used the 6'4 guy in a good way. They're certainly going to measure it, though. Oh, yes, they will bring it out and measure, and this will be a crucial measurement here. As you said, Pete, the spot of the ball, oh, so important here. Jim Jackson will be watching. The chain crew will make their way to the near side hash mark. A little bit of drama here early in the second half. They may not have made it. No, Appalachian is held up on the fourth and inches. So many times in that situation, the quarterback is told just lunge to the farthest point and try to hang out there. That time, Southern with a great second effort to get up and stuff him. And watch, you're a big 6'4 guy. You just want to jump forward. But look at the nice pop delivered deep in by the interior line. I, I believe uh, getting up there with the uh, the first pursuit while there were a couple of guys in there. J.R. Rivera comes to the outside, breaks the tackle. He's going to go all the way. Like lightning, it doesn't take long. The last thing Appalachian could have wanted in the span of just a few seconds in real time and on the clock, things go dreadfully against the Mountaineers. They lose inches on a first down try, and then just like that, Revere in an explosion. A point after touchdown attempt to come out of the hold of Chris Johnson. Rob Baronis to attempt it. The kick is up. It's good. 12-33 left to go in the third quarter. Georgia Southern increases their lead thanks to a 40-yard scamper by J.R. Revere. 17-7. Seventeen seven as Georgia Southern strikes 40 yards on one play and takes up nine seconds and is so often in the game of football emotions can take a quick sudden turn. The kickoff comes to the 11 up to the 20 to the 25 outside to the 30 still on his feet out of bounds at the 38 yard line Troy Albee. I'll be that time contained to the outside, but he did bust good yards uh, that time. Georgia Southern's offense uh, knows what it has to do against Appalachian. You face a quick defense like the Mountaineers have. Misdirection can be a key. Deception, keeping them off balance, making them look either way. As for the kickoff return, I'll be an explosive guy. First, he uh, looks like he's going to go behind the wedge. Then he improvises and cuts outside. He scampered into the out of bounds and puts it first and 10 from the 38-yard line of Appalachian. They'll send White out on the flank. They'll hit him with a pass in motion. He's down the far side, dives for the first down sticks, but he's out of bounds at the 47. Jose White is another one of those guys we talked about, part of their four-man rotation in that backfield. Didn't see him in the first half, but you know, this time a nice way to uh, get some uh, fresh face in there and try something else. A little swing pass might actually go as a uh, carry. I believe he threw it uh, back. Appalachian really using a lot of motion with that back running right behind the quarterback on the on the immediate snap and getting the uh, the handoff and now that little swing out to the flats. Second down and three yards to go. The handoff again to White who did not play in the first the half. Gets across the, the 50 down to the 47. Georgia Southern's defense right now having to play without defensive tackle Robert LeBlanc. He was injured going into the game. We knew his playing time would be limited. He's aggravated his rib cage injury and will not return to this ball game. So, as a result, Willie Johnson has a, a lot of work ahead of him. He's a freshman who was going to start if LeBlanc couldn't go. On the ground, you see in total yards, Appalachian just barely ahead of Georgia Southern, 227 to 222. Out of the shotgun. Burchett rolling right, throwing. It is complete at the 35. One official says no, one official says yes, they'll wave it off. Incomplete pass. That looked like it could have been either a catch, an interception, or a catch and a fumble, but it uh, goes as, a, as an incompletion. We'll watch it on the replay out of the shotgun.
Through the pocket that time with Burchett. They may uh, try to do that now to, again, gives Georgia Southern something else to think about. He's looking downfield, trying to move it, and apparently had his eye on Slade. It looks like he had him on the whole time as they both moved that way. Georgia Southern, I think, thought they almost had an sure. interception. Yeah, it looked like uh, they'd almost stepped up and uh, made the pick with David Young. The pitch in the backfield. Stringing them out east-west. Not much on the gain on that play. On the, on the carry, Jimmy Watkins and the defense also stringing them out east-west. Georgia Southern, Michael Moore. Watkins is uh, one of the guys who they kick it away from when uh, they're kicking off to Appalachian. He's been a great return man, and he's the kind of guy with some explosive speed. And if he can get on the corner, he can make some things happen. So a third down situation upcoming, and we saw what happened in third and fourth down in the previous series for Appalachian. So it's third down and six to go for the Mountaineers of Appalachia. They split a man wide to each side, a man in the slot on each side. One back, White in the backfield. Back to pass, heavy pressure. The screen to White, incomplete. Broken up nicely there by Michael Youngblood. Jose White was about 10 feet in the air when he went up to get that ball at the highest point. Talk about snuffing out the screen. The defensive lineman pursued deep for the quarterback, but the linebackers beautifully staying at home, especially number 41, Youngblood. Watch him. He is lined up off of the left side of your screen. He reads the screen right away. That's why he was right on White. And a beautiful job of getting in there and not letting anything happen. So now another fourth down situation for Appalachian State, who trails 17-7 with 11.02 to go here in the third quarter. And a timeout has been called as the Eagles of Georgia Southern want to talk it over. They're rallied around their head coach, Paul Johnson. Not very often does Coach Johnson stick his head into a defensive huddle. Well, he wants that uh, momentum not to be forgotten, and he wants uh, now that uh, defense, or you know, the punt coverage unit first and foremost, uh, to get some, make something exciting happen here because you can go for the kill on your next offensive series, especially if you're starting downhill on the other side of the 50. Jerry Moore talking to the officials about the timeout, and there's Michael Youngblood who made that great, great play, and as you said, played at home. He's already got one fumble recovery to his credit this year, but uh, did a great job of staying at home and smelling that one out. It was almost as if Georgia Southern's defense knew what the play was, mm -hmm. and Appalachian said, OK, stop us. Good preparation. Yeah, Michael Youngblood played at home. He's used to playing at home from just up the road in Waynesboro, Georgia. So he's always got people. He's got to impress in the stands. And that time, they've got to be proud of the local guy. Nathan McKinney has already McKinney punted twice today for a 35.5 yard average. He's set to kick it away, standing at his own 43 yard line. Looking into the sun is Anthony Williams, the lone man back to receive the punt. It's a high spiraling punt that hits at the five and rolls into the end zone. So Georgia Southern will start at first and 10 from their own 20 yard line with 10 53 to go in the third period, up by a score of 17 7. Appalachian's defense now having uh, been burned on that one play and their only time out there on the field so far in this half has lots to think about. And again, there's still that Adrian Peterson factor. That's what is so difficult when you face a team like Georgia Southern, they get other guys guys making it happen like a Revere or Andre Weathers and so forth. You still have the number one option. You've got to be worried about every time the ball is snapped. Peterson. Georgia Southern with a man split to each side. Fake to Peterson. Going to pitch late to Coley. Trying to get outside. He does. He's at the 40. Cuts back at the 45 and at midfield before he gets knocked down. Mike Myers on the carry. Makes a spin move to elude what would have been two potential tacklers. Got a few more yards because of it. And had he kept his feet, he might have been able to go. Mark Myers, a slot back out of Powder Springs, Georgia. 5'7", 167. Gives Georgia Southern a first down. And again, the option worked beautifully. They ran it to the short side of the field, but Revere hanging on just long enough, and he got his running back heading upfield when he made the pitch. They'll put him in motion this time, hand it off to Peterson. Nope, Revere faking, keeping, scrambling left side. Needs a block. Can he get it? He lunges forward to the 42. Turned a potential busted play into about an eight-yard game. Well, Josh Jeffries, number 58 for Appalachian State. Throughout the day, his job has been to make sure Revere does indeed get rid of the football. And that time, he was uh, loyal enough to his coverage and hung back there just enough to distract Revere. Had Jeffries uh, overcommitted to where he thought the ball was going, Revere would have gone around the backside and been gone for another touchdown. Titus Johnson going to split wide to the right for Georgia Southern on a second down and two play. 
flag on the play. They give it to Peterson, and he busts for the first down to the 37. But there is a flag on the play. Georgia Southern awaiting the results of the flag. Referee Jim Jackson talking it over. Illegal shift against Georgia Southern. Peterson is so good. You know, a lot of fullbacks are just straightforward guys. They get the ball, and they're, they're just thinking power yards. But Peterson's so good at getting the football and quickly taking that step to where he sees the opening. That's what's really set him apart. So the penalty will back Georgia Southern up where it was second and about two or three yards. Illegal most five yards previous spot, first down, second down. Well, it's second down and eight now for Georgia Southern. The ball resting on the 47-yard line of Appalachian State. Chris Johnson with a touchdown catch to his credit. Wide open on the left side as he splits out. They give it to Peterson. He runs it up the middle, and he'll get about five of those yards back. So it's third down and three. 43 is best, has to come over. And again, when you can see the handoff happen and Peterson coming at you, okay, you know where the ball is going. Now the scary part is, does Peterson get ahead of steam before you get a chance to get in and pop it? Georgia Southern one for seven on third down conversions. Appalachian two for seven. And Georgia Southern best in the league uh, at uh, getting the third down conversions. Appalachian best at stopping them. Revere keeps pitches. It's a late pitch, but it's a perfect pitch to Andre Weathers, who scampers down the near side for a first down as he's knocked out of bounds at the 31. This will make you see the cardiac doctor. Great weapon in the short yardage situation. Put a man out on the plank, try to get as many one-on-one -on -one situations as you can. It's a good way to get those yards you need and even then some. And so it will be Chris Johnson going wide to the right as Paul Johnson is called to play. And he hopes that the Georgia Southern players will carry out their assignments. The handoff to Peterson. He goes off left guard and gets across the 25 to about the 23-yard line before he's knocked down. Wes Hunter on the stop for Appalachian Wes Hunter on the stop. Just straight up the middle. And really nothing fancy about the blocking scheme either. And this offensive line much maligned and much adjusted throughout the season, either because of injuries, but more so because of, of personnel. And they want to see some different guys uh, get in there and get some consistency. And that time just blowing forward and blowing through Appalachian. Putting a man in motion to the near side. Giving it to Peterson. Left side. Touchdown. Twenty-four yards left side, Adrian Peterson. And again, Pete, nothing fancy about the blocking here. Take a look on the right side of your screen, the left side of the Georgia Southern line. Some good work exposing the outside linebacker and moving Josh Jeffries out, and Peterson went right on the inside. Look at the great work by the lineman, the guys up front, the right side of that offensive line that includes uh, and has included a true freshman starting this year, actually the, the left side of that offensive line with James McCoy and also Dietrich Everett, a uh, sophomore and a senior respectively. Good work that time. Point after touchdown attempt by Veronis is good. So with 8.05 remaining in the third period, Georgia Southern has now increased their lead. It's Georgia Southern, 24. Appalachian State 7. Scott Shelton set to kick it off following the Adrian Peterson touchdown that has put Georgia Southern up 24-7. Adrian Peterson keeping that string intact about scoring in games. There's the kick. It's going to come toward the near side. It'll be caught by Albee at the 5 to the 10 to the 20. Up to the 28-yard line he goes, and that's where it'll be put in play first and 10 from the Appalachian 28. Adrian Peterson has now scored a uh, touchdown in all but four of his collegiate games, 33 of 37, and that last series puts him over 100 for the game, part of an impressive effort once again on the ground for the Eagles. 
And 257 yards, rushing yards for Georgia Southern, 138 for Appalachian. Adrian Peterson on 20 carries, now over the 100-yard mark. And that's now 37 for 37 in his college career. Paul Johnson saying, you know, that master's degree from Appalachian, boy, that, that worked out pretty good. And Jerry saying, why didn't you just stay at Western? Why did you come to school at App? Yeah, friendly alumnus we got on the other sideline <laughs> there. And it is a homecoming weekend here at Georgia Southern. Appalachian State now with the ball on the nine-yard line. As a penalty was assessed on the opening kickoff against Appalachian. Out of the shotgun. Burchett. On the three, decides to run up the middle, picks up a few yards as he gets up to the 13 before he's turned around and spun down. Now you're at the point in the game where you wonder if they would think about going back to either David Reeves or Daniel Jeremiah, the more experienced quarterbacks, guys who had kind of performed uh, sharing the starting duty over the past couple of seasons that Burchett had rested away from them. Here goes the big guy. Really can't even tell if that was even a broken play, but he was able to get some positive yards out of it. Twin receivers to each side, or trips to the left, twins to the right, back to pass, looking for a quick turn pattern. And they hit it at the 20. And it is Slade on the catch, fighting his way to the 22 and a half yard line. And that play almost looked like they were setting up the old hook and ladder because they had a receiver right there for it. Yes, they did. And on the other side of the football, this is the point in the game that Georgia Southern just loves defensively. When they're beaten, they're usually beaten on the big play because they're, the defense is usually playing with so many leads, so why wouldn't you gamble a lot? That time they blitzed an outside linebacker and actually uh, try to get to the quarterback uh, that way. You're going to probably see a lot more of that now. It's actually the inside linebacker, Jason Neese, who moved in. But this is the point in the game now where Georgia Southern can take some chances up 24 to 7. First and 10 for Appalachian. Again, three receivers left, two right. Burchett out of the shotgun and again overthrows the intended receiver. Actually put it out in front of him where Razak just could not get his hands on it. But there was an awful lot of blue shirts over there if he had made the catch. That's a dangerous play. Uh, Dangerous because, again, a, a hard hit probably causes a turnover in that situation. Secondly, a ball that you got a couple of blue jerseys right there, and that could fall in the wrong hands very easily. But. Second down and 10 for Georgia Southern with 6.43 remaining in the third quarter. Again out of the shotgun. Appalachian having to play catch up as they trail 24-7. Burchett back to pass down the near sidelines overthrown he felt pressure and just had to get rid of it he had Pescada coming right in front of him and Corey Middlebrooks uh, to his uh, left and as a result a smart move by the big guy the sophomore that's where his height really works well because he did not have to escape the pocket he could still see a pretty good uh, get a pretty good idea of what was going on with the coverage so he decided to walk it. and it goes back to what you were saying earlier now do you go to Reeves or go to Jeremiah who might be a bit rusty after being out a couple of weeks or do you let this guy Get some experience and use that size to your advantage. I would say if they do make a switch in the next series, probably Reeves just a little bit better arm than Jeremiah. Burchett again out of the shotgun. Looking down the middle, complete on the run at the 43-yard line. That pass complete to Joey Gibson. Getting up, shaking it off. Yeah, you just like what Burchett does. He just hangs back there. He's a big guy. So that's uh, kind of the classical drop back quarterback. So many times you see quarterbacks trying to create and move the pocket, but he just holds his poison. He has absolutely no uh, hesitation to send it right over the middle and gives like it. Like a seasoned quarterback, he threw it where he knew the receiver would be, not where he was. Let him beautiful. Again out of the shotgun, rolling left. Heavy pressure. He lets it go. It is. It's incomplete, but almost a great catch by Rashad Slade. Oh, he bobbled that ball right at the sideline. And it may sound like a lame excuse, but I actually think the sun might have affected Slade on that play. He had a defender who moved away from the ball, but uh, that looked like it came right into the angle, and he was looking right up into the, uh, the sun. Check it out here. It appears there's a little bit of gambling going on again, as you can if you're Georgia Southern, but then suddenly the ball and the sun are right in the eyes of Slade, and Mother Nature won out. Home field advantage at Paulson Stadium in this quarter going to Georgia Southern as the receivers are looking back into a bright sun ball. Burchett again out of the shotgun. Dropping straight back. Letting it go. It is complete. 
at the 45, but a pickup of only two on that play as he hits Razak coming across. And Youngblood stepping up now. He's really uh, taking uh, each and every play to heart. They're putting the running backs out on him. Those are his assignment. He took White down in a screen attempt before that time. He is step for step with Razak. One of the adjustments made by Georgia Southern's defense, Pete, is they're not playing as soft. They're not playing as back. They're playing up now. And as you said, being up by the score they are, they can gamble. With. Go for the kill. Maybe Paul Johnson dropped that uh, in that huddle we saw on the sideline with the defense. Again, out of the shotgun. Third and nine. Looking to the left side. It is complete and caught at the Georgia Southern 45. Up to the 40. Down to the 35. They gambled and got burned. Nate Gates was watching what uh, Slade was doing. It was pretty obvious to see. He was going to the first down marker, turned around. So at that point, he starts looking at Slade's eyes. They got big, and then Gates went after the interception. Didn't uh, happen. And uh, almost turned into a real uh, drastic situation because... Uh, Slade with one more step might have busted. Watch what happens right here. The play develops quickly enough. It's clear it's coming that way. So uh, Gates had already at that point cut in front going for the ball. When you saw him wrap around, he was just coming back to try to make the tackle. And certainly a great job by the receiver to get his back to the defender and get between him and the ball. Again, there's the draw this time to Beard up the middle. He rips it down to the 20. Appalachian now impressively returning fire. They used the passing game to get into Eagles territory. Then that time, a very a nice little delay handoff. And Beard is super at that because he can explode and then he can power his way forward. We talk about the toughness and running of Adrian Peterson. Beard is certainly a runner in the Southern Conference that defenses are going to realize they've been up against because he is such a punishing runner. He delivers the blows as well as receiving them. Until last week against Western Carolina, Georgia Southern had been pretty tight against the run this year, but uh, they had some, some of their uh, defensive schemes exposed, and Appalachian trying to build on that. They're spreading the field. It is complete and then dropped at the 15. And again, to these old tired eyes, it looked like they might be setting up that hook and ladder. Yeah, Sterling Hayward, I, I don't know if he was thinking about the hook before the ladder, but uh, in that particular situation, that's a ball he has got to hang on to. That there. Probably gnarling their teeth not far from where we are in the Appalachian uh, coaches box upstairs here. Jerry Moore trying to come up with something that'll get his Mountaineers back into the end zone. Paul Johnson hoping his defensive coaches are pushing all the right buttons. 24-7 Georgia Southern in the lead. Out of the shotgun again, second and 10 over the middle. It is complete at the 15 and fumbled. But was he down? He was down. The ground caused the fumble, and it can't do that. David Young came up with a loose football. Wilcox got hit immediately and dropped quickly to the ground, and when he did, the ball popped out. Got a catch by him, and uh, fortunately, his knee got to the ground apparently before the ball <laughs> did. I don't boy, I'd like to see that from a different angle. That was a situation where the, uh, the side jut off to uh, the left of the play uh, came in and insisted he was down so he was looking into where the ball was so the ball now rests on the 12 yard line of Georgia Southern Appalachian will send Gibson wide to the left they will fake the pitch rolling left Burchett has it can he get to the end zone yes <laughs> Burchett on the 13 yard touchdown run for Appalachian a point where you use over pursuit to your advantage. An excellent way to counteract the quickness of Georgia Southern's defense. And Burchett, no speed burner in his own right, had the entire Eagle D thinking that way. Number two, a guy we talked about earlier, in is Willie Johnson. As a right tackle, he necessarily doesn't have the responsibility of an outside linebacker, but he was maybe the last guy who could have at least gotten a tackle for a loss. But by the time he got into the secondary, Burchett had the angle to the end zone. Mark Wright to attempt the extra point. Six of nine in the extra point department, actually now seven of ten. What happens here? There's the snap. The kick is up. It's good. 337 left in the third quarter. Appalachian narrows the gap as Georgia Southern now leads 24-14. But a great maneuver to take advantage of the over-pursuit of Georgia Southern's defense by Burchett. Turns it into six. Georgia Southern's quarterbacks uh, used a technique that, for all intents and purposes, was invented by that man, Paul Johnson, when he was the offensive coordinator back in the 80s here. The twirl play. The quarterback takes it, fakes one way, and then twirls around and goes the other. Well, that time, 
Burchett with uh, his own version of, of the, the twirl. twirl. You might call it the uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, fake pitch and stumble, but it was uh, it was effective indeed, and the big guy gets to the end zone. Jerry Moore going over in his head. What else they need to do now to try to narrow the gap even more is the lead is now cut to 10 by Georgia Southern. We are late in the third quarter, 337 remaining in the third quarter, but lots of time. And between these two teams, anything can happen. And we certainly know about this year's Appalachian State team that they never give up. That was proven last week as they took Furman right down to the wire. That drive covered 91 yards, 12 plays, and ate up four minutes and 28 seconds of clock. I can't imagine anyone was even thinking uh, that there may be a substitution for Burchett. Who would even come up with such a I thing? don't know. I have Where no did, idea. Who was even suggesting that? Certainly. We'll have them dealt with at a later date. <laughs> From the six, Georgia Southern on the return. Up to the 20. Still on his feet and falling forward to the 29. On the return, Anthony Williams. Well, there's something about a program that has had such great players come through it over the years. You you then try to step up to that next level, and then obviously a guy like Revere trying to step up to Greg Hill's level. Anthony Williams has me thinking about players like Earthwind Moreland and other the great return speed guys that have been in this program over the past years, and they want to you know, implement the same kind of talents and abilities that those guys did. And that time, you can see he's running with fire and trying to get that open field and then uses burners. Chris Johnson at the bottom of your screen. Put a man in motion to the top of the screen. Revere fakes, keeps, turns it up, and then stumbles on the cut. He's down at the 38-yard line. That looked like it had some great potential uh, first for Appalachian and then for Revere, although he does get some good yards off of it. Uh, he might have even busted it. Looked like he got tripped up just a little bit. But good pursuit at first by the Appalachian defense. And again, Revere using that ability to go down the line with Peterson, the primary decoy. It really helps to get to the corner if you're the quarterback. Everyone's got to worry about the big guy in the middle. Revere only 25 yards away himself from 100 yards. Second and one, they give it to Peterson. He breaks up the middle. He's across the 45 to the 46. And J.R. Revere that time <laughs> went out and blocked the linebacker and put Josh Jeffries on his back. Uh, the little quarterback pushing the, the big uh, end uh, all the way back into the secondary. Revere, 5'11", 184, can deliver a blow as well as pass the ball. Adrian Peterson now up to 133 yards on 22 carries. And of course, the one touchdown. First and 10, Georgia Southern. Giving it to Peterson, who gets a couple of yards, and that's about it. Is Appalachian's defense all over him? Hunter in on him, as well as Best. I'm thinking long ball at this point. Why not? You've got a chance to regain the momentum, make a quick strike. You've shown them things. You're near the 50. Second down and long. If you come back at third and long, you've got enough in your arsenal, and you've shown you can get out in the corner and make the run. Why not try to recapture it with a quick play? Well, we'll see if that thinking is inside the head of Coach Paul Johnson. Down at the bottom of your screen is Titus Johnson. They fake the handoff. Revere going to cut it up and gets hit and dropped just across the 50 into Appalachian territory between the 48 and 49 yard line. Good work by Jimmy Freeman that time to step up and uh, contain things. And he uh, lines up at a left end. And that time they came right to his side. Watch off the option so much for uh, putting it up in the air, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> Freeman moving down the line. And also Remy Owalowo, the safety stepping up and forcing things back inside. And again, that still remains the, the overlying theme with the safeties to contain in and the linebackers to take care of the business with Peterson coming at him in the middle. It's third down and five for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. A man left, man slot left, man wide right. Here comes Revere to the near side. He's going to cut it up. It's not a first down. He picked up maybe a yard or two. And there's Mr. Best right there with it. Jeffries in on the tackle. Josh Jeffries as well as Joe Best. So now a fourth down and about four yards to go, three or four yards. And here's where that riverboat gambler mentality of that man comes in. But do you do with a 24 to 14 lead? in front of 20,000 against the number five team in the country with the potential uh, of a Southern Conference uh, on the line. They've got Appalachian confused though. Mountaineers are barely getting their return team out in there. Back deep to receive. 
for Appalachian. A delay of game, though, penalty being charged. Joey Gibson ran out onto the field so that they would have somebody back there. And a delay of game call coming against Georgia Southern. And this game could slowly be taking on the personality of a great ball game played on this very field last year when Georgia Southern went up big on Furman early. Delay. In a different Offense, sense, five-yard penalty, lead. still fourth down. They had a pretty big lead in the first half. Furman eked its way back in, and before you knew it, down the wire, the game uh, got all even for Southern uh, won uh, on a late field goal. But this game is starting to take on that kind of personality. Shelton stands on his own 34-yard line, looking directly into the sun. Appalachian moving some people around. A long count by Shelton. There's a snap. And the kick, he gets it away. Not a great kick, but it'll hit at the 30, and it'll take an Appalachian bounce to the 31, where it'll be downed by Georgia Southern. Boy, Marshall Quattlebaum that time, some great pressure for Appalachian. Might have even gotten a hand on it, and I'm not so sure they had punt block called. He just fired through and uh, forced the issue just a little bit that time. So it will be Appalachian's ball, first and 10 from their own 31-yard line with just seven seconds remaining here in the third quarter, trailing by 10. Burchett takes the ball, rolls to the right, looking, passes, complete at the 41-yard line to Troy Albee. Albee, and there's uh, two seconds left now in the third quarter. That time, Burchett uh, getting out on the flank. You know, he, he actually moves pretty well. He just doesn't look like he moves real well, but he moves out there. And, you know, for what it's worth, he gets out of bounds. The clock stops. Not only do they get a first down out of it, but it gives you one more play in the third quarter, and that may seem minimal and trite at this point, but in this kind of situation, that could be absolutely huge. What if they, they strike right here? It could, could truly change things. Albee did a great job of running Rainey right off of the pattern and then turning it up. Again, the handoff to Beard, and he's dangerous anytime he gets his hands on the ball. He will get it up to the 48-yard line, and the third quarter will come to an end. We go to the fourth and final stanza of this 1AA football game between the number one ranked Georgia Southern and the number five ranked Matt News of Appalachian State. At this point, Georgia Southern 24, Appalachian 14. Adrian Peterson stands there, and he's involved whether he's on the offense or on the sidelines. He's involved in every play, watching and cheering his teammates on. Already going over 100 yards today for the 37th consecutive game, all 37 games in his college career. By the way, earlier in the uh, game, he went over 1,000 for the season, but at this point for him, that's, that's really nothing more than just a, a minimal barrier in, in the campaign. Many trees have given their lives this year for the paperwork <laughs> that it's taken right. to record his records and pass them on. This is amazing, the uh, the Adrian Peterson watch, and of course, the, the sports information office here, the fine work they do, they are now distributing a CD-ROM about Adrian Peterson, sending it out nationally. It has the word Heisman on it. They feel as strongly about him as a 1AA player as they did uh, the folks at Alcorn State about Steve McNair several years ago. Second down, six yards to go. They're gonna pass it out on the flats to the right side. A great <laughs> block out there. Wow. And they'll get the first down. And now they trying to unpile him on the field. But what a bruising oh. block out there on the wing. Wayne Smith for Appalachian number 70, 6'2, 295. Hello. And boom. Wow. Knocked his helmet off. Big time delivery. Right now, Deion Soaks thinks a refrigerator just came rolling down the street and clocked him. This is unbelievable. I mean, he just knocks him off his feet and the helmet off the head. So a uh, bruising block or sprung him, and Stokes is being looked at by the medical staff out there. 
He may wonder who they are. He was really popped that time. Appalachian State in an era where they, they have, uh, they're emphasizing quickness and a, a wide open attack still, as they always have over the years, has great size for this level on the uh, offensive line. 310 pounds, 295, 265, 305, and 295 among the starters. For one AA football, that's pretty stout. Steve Stokes coming off of the field now. Being tended to by the medical staff at Georgia Southern. First and ten, Mountaineer. And it'll be first and ten for Appalachian State from the Georgia Southern 41-yard line. Up under center this time, Urchette. Pitches coming around the corner. Can he turn it? Yes. Turning it upfield on the run, Razak. All the way down to the 25. Razak that time able to turn the Jets after Kornatz or his fullback was able to give him a nice block to open the seam. But that time Razak showing you he can get down the line and pick his hole uh, just as we've seen Peterson do at times today and uh, some of the other backs. They did a great job to spring him on the corner and it's another first down for Appalachian. Credit the offensive line of the Mountaineers. Razak 58 yards on just six rushes. The ball on the 26 of Georgia Southern. Rolling right to pass. Stopping for the corner of the end zone. Touchdown! Wow! Troy Alby with the catch. Leaping high over the defender. That's twice today there's been a mismatch between the receiver and the defender, and both battles have gone to the guys wearing white. Looks like an alley-oop for the slam dunk. He throws it up, and Albie goes to the highest point. Well, actually, it came right back into his arms and grabs it, and then one hands as he's going down. Pretty play by the Mountaineer receiver. Burchett, the pump. Cornerback buys it. There goes Albie. Recovering as best he could was Gates. Did a good job to get back there, but it was too late, and right like the, just like that, Appalachian back in this game. Mark Wright to attempt the extra point that would cut it to a three-point lead. It's up. It's good. 14-09 left in the contest. Georgia Southern beginning to feel the heat from the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Georgia Southern 24, Appalachian 21. Appalachian State tightening the noose, 24-21. Georgia Southern in the lead. They are set to receive the kickoff. It comes and will be rolling through the legs of Anthony Williams at the 10. He's got to run it out. He's at the 5. He's backwards at the 4. Again at the 5. He's hit. The ball's loose. There's a flag. It might be a face mask call, but I believe the ball is going to be retained by Georgia Southern. And for a moment, it looked like Williams might have dropped the football uh, based on the reaction over the fans from the far side of the field for Appalachian looking into the play. That's a scary situation when you're running after the ball and you've got defenders running in the same direction you are. Right there, they the spin his head around, and Williams goes down. And yes, the ball did kind of pop loose. And the Georgia Southern players were looking for the flag, so the penalty will be against Appalachian State. Personal foul, face mask on the return. On white team, first down. A bad break for Appalachian, puts the ball now out at the 21 of Georgia Southern, where they would have had Georgia Southern pinned in the shadow of the goal. J.R. Revere handing it off to Adrian Peterson. He wiggles his way through. He busts the tackle. He's across the 40 to the 43. Justin Severn on the stop. He took Justin Severn's uh, on a ride right there, and then Hall came in to finish him off. But it opened a beautiful hole on the right side of that uh, line of scrimmage. Nice Paul Collins, down. the yeah. true freshman. And Michael uh, Anderson uh, also uh, doing good work in the right guard slot. He cut in, moved the man inside, and Collins did the rest. And there went Peterson. And in motion to the near side. Again to Peterson. He fights his way to midfield. Time of possession does now become important, but north to south mobility still takes precedence. And if you're Georgia Southern and can push it right down the field and answer that score by Appalachian, you may be able to start feeling pretty good about things again. Again, Peterson 
Nothing fancy. Just good hard-nosed football. And this is happening, of course, against what is uh, traditionally a four-man front for Appalachia. And in motion to the near side. Again, straight ahead. They hand it to Peterson. He doesn't have the first down, but he grinds it out. So it'll be third down and about one. And, and for all the problems and shifting of personnel and trying new guys here or there and playing a true freshman, starting him at the uh, right tackle, it has to make you, if anything, feel pretty good when you look at the film of this game. You're the coaching staff of Georgia Southern to see you're blowing away some big guys and, a, and an even man front with your interior running game. Georgia Southern, two of nine on third down conversions. Appalachian, five of ten. We talk a great deal about the man wearing number three, but let's also talk about 77 and 61 and 74 and 57 and 73. They're up there opening those holes. Straight ahead, Adrian Peterson brought down by Menino. He had about a yard before he was hit and about four more afterward. The clock running. 12-21 as they move the first down chains. Georgia Southern leading 24 to 21. Appalachian State now looking into the sun, but so will be any Georgia Southern receiver. Revere, there's that twirl, comes to the right side, cuts it up, but good job by staying at home by Jimmy Freeman, the defensive end who really stayed in there and was really stride for stride across the line with Revere. Almost overcommitted one way, but still had enough uh, ability to cut back and, and trip up uh, Revere, but nice work by the linebacker. This is scary, the twirl, this quick spin. Now they've had a great line of quarterbacks that has uh, done it here, Freeman that time. And it looks like Revere might in cutting up might have uh, stumbled a little bit too. Chris Johnson will go wide to the left. He's already got one cut touchdown catch today. And in motion to the near side. The fake to Peterson. Revere on the keep. Breaks the tackle at the 40. He's at the 35 at the 30. The 25, 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, J.R. Revere. Revere at the 43-yard touchdown run. Revere, 43-yard touchdown. Well, one thing you have to do when you're playing a fine offense is tackle. You can't touch and let him go. Revere for the touchdown, truly Revere for the touchdown. One, two, broken, a third as he spins off of that, and then he dances away from anyone else, and he is gone. J.R. Revere scampers for the touch. Rob Baronis to attempt the extra point. Puts him over 100 for the day on the ground, so two 100-yard rushers in the same game. How's that for a ground attack? and against a defense that does a good job against the run. Certainly a one that was right up there in that uh, category, second against the run in this league coming in, having allowed just 123 yards a game. Verona's point after touchdown is good. So with 11-18 remaining in the ball game, Georgia Southern pushes the lead back to 10. Georgia Southern 31, Appalachian State 21. Well, if you like this game, look look what we've got in store for you next week. Ohio State at Iowa, San Diego State at BYU, West Georgia at Wachita Baptist, and number six, Miami at Temple. CSS, your sports leader in the Southeast. We're set for the kickoff. Scott Shelton booms it. And it's going to go a yard or two into the end zone, and will be laying on the turf quickly, picking it up. It is Troy Albee, and so Appalachian will start first and 10 from their own 20. Now the Mountaineers must answer. The last thing they wanted was to be looking at more of a deficit after coming back in two straight uh, series, moving it down, getting the points, and climbing back in. Still plenty of time, obviously, with better than 11 minutes to go. And a 10-point game, uh, those kind of leads can disappear in a hurry, too. Absolutely. With well, these two quality programs, anything can happen. And it looks like out of the shotgun formation, trips right, twins left. Burchett out of the shotgun, having to scramble. He's going to get hit and drop. On the sack. Uh-oh. Georgia Southern 
He was grabbing his knee as he went down, and Burchette is in quite a bit of pain. Put him down, Georgia Southern's Gino Tatera on the sack. When you spread wide like that, you're obviously showing pass with no one in the backfield, so that gives the defensive lineman uh, pretty good in the linebackers for that matter. It gives you the opportunity to stunt and send send some people. Not necessarily a huge rush, uh, simply the linemen fighting off their blocks. It almost looks like Appalachian might have been setting up for a screen because they released on uh, Gino right there and, and kind of let him go, but it turns out to be a, a tough one for the Mountaineers Burchette, and their quarterback. As you can see there, is getting bent over. Yeah. His leg is going one way, the trunk of his body going another. And they're looking at the left ankle. Oh, it actually looked like he was grabbing his knee at first, but it must have been the uh, the pain from the ankle. And the medical staff out looking at him. And I know that Appalachian fans are watching with great interest right here to see what happens. Now, if you're Jerry Moore and Burchett doesn't uh, look like he might be able to get back into the game, what do you do, Pete? David Reeves is warming up on the sideline right now. Uh, he appears to be the guy that's going to come in. He's got the better arm between their other two quarterbacks, uh, he and Daniel Jeremiah. And uh, Burchette, uh, boy, that's a scary situation. Tough to, tough guy. 16, Joe he is uh, being helped off the field, and that is, needless to say, a, a very dismal sign for Appalachian. He was player of the week last week in the Southern Conference, and certainly deservedly so. It's tough to see him leave the game. Lamar, LeVar Rainey going over, giving him a word of encouragement. I'm trying to see from this vantage point we have, he's putting even the slightest amount of weight on that ankle. It doesn't appear that he is. Nope. You know, he, has it, uh, he has it lifted, so you know, that's a scary situation. Cornets are coming out to give him a shoulder to get helped off with. And so, Appalachian having the call on David Reeves, the senior, with three touchdowns passing on the year. Out of the shotgun, dropping straight back, looking to the near side, lets it go, it is incomplete at the 32. He had Rashid Slade open, but the ball just a little far thrown, and he was out of bounds when he made the catch. Tough to come in uh, and, and throw any kind of pass, but if you're going to throw something, that kind of a fade or a sideline pass is a pretty one to throw. Just like J.R. Revere of Georgia Southern, David Reeves is the son of a uh, coach. His dad, uh, John Reeves, also a fine quarterback, both collegiately and professionally, and had, uh, had several uh, stops in his coaching career, including Florida and South Carolina. David is on now, a guy with experience, a guy used to coming off the bench in games, too, and it is his charge now to get the Mountaineers a rally going, but they're in a hole. Again, out of the shotgun, as Appalachian having to play catch up, looking straight down the middle. Going to let it go. It is complete at the 35 yard line with the catch, Kareem Razak. And it will be a first down for Appalachian. Airing it out once again is Reeves. This time, as the uh, running back coming under, they flexed off a little bit. And it allowed Razak to get uh, right across the middle and some, some great yards there for the Mountaineers. 10-18, left to go. Well, they just announced the attendance, 21,894. On the handoff, straight up the middle, up across the 40, close to the 41. Razak on the carry. Deion Stokes, who got hit so hard his helmet popped off, has been taken for x-rays on his jaw. He got right back up and went in and was a part of the group that made the tackle after the play. So they're going to go take a look at his jaw. 9.37 remaining in this one. Georgia Southern with a 10-point lead. Reeves coming in for the injured Burchette. Under center. Fakes the handoff. Play action. Passing to the right side. It is incomplete to Wilcox. As they run over the chain crew. The fourth largest crowd in Paulson Stadium history. This the fourth largest crowd in Paulson Stadium history. And it's been a very, very entertained crowd and a great crowd. 
we hear or have heard stories you know, around the country of fans getting out of hand, but this has been a very well-behaved crowd here. And a nice turnout from the Appalachian standpoint, too. They travel well, and they brought a lot of fans with them this time. Out of the shotgun, Reeves standing at his own 35. Third down, five to go. Looking to pass over the middle. Complete at the 40-yard line. Oh, what a great catch by Joey Gibson. He went high into the air. He could play basketball in the new facility at Appalachian with that kind of leaping ability. He and Albie could both be the uh, the three guys who go back door and uh, slam it home. Watch this. Just like Albie went upstairs for that touchdown catch earlier, there's Gibson. Looks like he took it right off of the uh, the top of the helmet of the defender, LeVar Rainey. There's another look at it. And a gutty pass by Reeves, a gunslinger like his dad was when he was a QB. No fear, throw it up there and let the big guy go get it. First and 10, Appalachian again, a pass complete at the 35, down to the 30 again to Joey Gibson. To Gibson. And you can sense, uh, you, you get the feeling there is a sense of urgency with that Appalachian offense to get that ball down the field. And Georgia Southern's defense at this point now, fourth quarter, you, just as Appalachians didn't want to be on its uh, last attempt at a stand, uh, they've got to start feeling a little bit tired this stage of the game. Well, Appalachian scores a touchdown, goes for two, makes it 29-31, onside kick, and they're right back in it. Sure. Second and two. Out of the shotgun. Quick pass to the near side, complete to Albi. He's dancing and gets out of bounds at the 31. Not much gain on the play. It'll be third and about two. I don't even know if they score here. They may just try to, because uh, they get a touchdown no and extra point puts them within a field goal anyway to tie. And with two. overtime being what it is, but uh, first things first in that time. That was uh, that may have been designed to set up what's ahead here. Get it out on the flank, get close to first down yardage, give you the option to do a couple of things. Well, while Reeves' first pass was a little wild, he's been right on the money with the last few. Third down and two. Rolling right, kicking his sack. Flag on the play, Reeves on the carry. And a flag on the far side, so hold everything. And Jamar Jones. Well, that time Reeves never had a chance. Look at first if he wanted to pitch it out on the flank to Razak, kind of a shovel pass, but uh, that never had a chance to materialize. Word from the sideline is that Burchett has a sprained ankle and will not return. Earlier Illegal formation offense only is refused. Is bound. Illegal procedure against Appalachian State. The penalty declined. It's fourth down and five from the 35 of Georgia Southern. Second time this season, Reeves has had to come on in relief in a big game. In the first game when they beat Wake, he came on in relief of Daniel Jeremiah, who went down with a knee injury. And that was a game that Appalachian won, beating Wake Forest. Dropping straight back. It's intercepted. Georgia Southern with the interception. Derek Cooper, far side, down the stretch he goes. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Flag on the play. But hold everything. A flag at the 26-yard line. And if Gibson gets the call his way, it's going to be defensive holding. You could see him indicating that he was held in that situation when a defender is able to get free uh, like that and be right in front of the ball. You have a feeling the receiver was taken out on the play. They're going to bring it back. And while the catch and run by Cooper was exciting, it'll back it up. On the replay. Well, there you go right there. I think you saw the end of it. Gibson was the one complaining. That's because he got a, a mouthful of LeVar Rainey who appeared, knocked him down as the ball was still in a catchable situation. Not that it would have been intercepted anyway because it looked like the uh, the gamble had uh, the commitment to making the gamble uh, by uh, three Cooper to make. Pass interference, defense at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. LeVar Rainey, I think, anticipated the interception and thought I'd better make a block, but he made it. Just a little early. Or he might have even, he might not have seen Rainey, uh, or he might not have seen uh, the uh, Cooper going up to make the pick, and he might have just been trying to get on Gibson and knock the ball away, and that might have caused that. From the 26 now, Georgia Southern. That could be just huge, obviously. We'll have to face a first down by Appalachian State because of the penalty. Reeves back to pass, lets it go, complete at the 21. Yeah. A 
a pickup of about four and a half, almost five. Call it second down and five to go. You got to like the way Reeves has come off cold off the bench and is throwing BBs. And that's a lot of that is experience. A guy who's been around for a while. And this time, they go ahead and they bring Razak right across the middle, get him out there by himself in the boundary. Nice one on one open field tackle, though. Pretty good execution by Nate Gates. Second down, they fake the handoff, play action, looking, scrambling, running for the far side, spun out of bounds at the 20. They'll be about four yards short. So Appalachian, about four yards away from a first down. It'll be third down and four for the Mountaineers. And possibly one down away from having to make a big decision there within Wright's range at this point. But his biggest problem, not distance, but the inconsistency, especially pulling the ball. Either way, you can get back within one score here. It's just whether you want to try to get up close to three. 7.05 remaining in the game. Appalachian trying to come back. Down by 10. Reeves out of the shotgun. Let's it go left side, complete at the 15. The ball spins out of his hands after he hits the ground, and the ground is what caused the fumble. It appears that it will be a first down for Appalachian. David Young, or Michael Young, what I should say, on the tackle. Fournatzer is the kind of guy you really respect a player like that. He uh, he got a lot of touches, especially in the red zone last year. This year, not carrying the ball a lot, but everything he does, he just does well. If he needs to, they need him on a catch like that, big play, he pulls it in. His blocking has been phenomenal, especially out off tackle today. First and 10 from the Georgia Southern 14. Appalachian out of the shotgun. Reeves looking left. Fires, complete at the 10, and down he goes. complete to Slade. He had an armed guard out there after he made the catch in the person of Joey Gibson. And it's not as if Georgia Southern's back in a prevent. I mean, they're bringing people. That time they blitzed with uh, what looked like the outside linebacker, and uh, Reeves had to get rid of it in a hurry, and, and he did. It appeared that Michael Ward actually slid inside and, and came right up to force uh, pressure a little bit. Second down and five for Appalachian. They'll spread them. Nobody in the backfield. Out of the shotgun. Looking to the right side. Complete at the 10. To the 5. Touchdown! Troy Alby with a great catch and a dive to the end zone. Wow, that is reckless abandon. Taking the ball, having the middle to, uh, to go for it, and that he does. He had to jump between two defenders to get to the pay dirt line. Watch on the replay. He just cuts right back against the grain See, after he catches it. Would-be tackler falling down, and then it's just basically a sprint, and am I going to run over you to get there? And that he does. So Albee made it in. And Mark Wright will attempt the extra point. Mark Wright in for the point after. Kicking into the sun. There's the snap. It's up. It's good. This good. one isn't over with 6.01 to go 31. in the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern 31, Appalachian whittling away with 28. They love their Eagles in Statesboro. And what a great game for one double A football in the Southern Conference. 31-28 with 6.01 left to go as Appalachian State gets in and scores, and here's the kickoff. Anthony Williams from the 10. 15, 20, 25, up to the 30-yard line, and that's where Georgia Southern will put it in play, first and 10 from their own 30. Georgia Southern answered the last Appalachian score, and now at this point, you have a pretty good idea where the ball is gonna go. As for the Mountaineers, impressive work by the quarterback off the bench. Five minutes and 17 seconds, 80 yards, 14 plays, and the 10-yard touchdown reception by Mr. Albee. And a play that started with one quarterback in there and finished off by uh, Reeves and relief of Burchett. Here comes Georgia Southern's drive now, a man in motion to the near side. They give it to Peterson. He gets up to the 20, or excuse me, the 35 before he's brought down. A pickup of five on the play, second and five. And Georgia Southern wanting to run some clock and keep those chains moving. Well, that guy, Adrian Peterson, is now, uh, if, if he ever was and always has been, the uh, the man uh, to get the ball to for Georgia Southern. Freeman and Best 
as important at this point as to what they do, wrapping up and pulling down in that Second interior. And, and protecting the football. Southern. That's the all-important mm -hmm. thing for Georgia Southern right now. And Appalachian going to try to force the mistakes. There's the play action. Going to go to the left side to Johnson. A catch at the 35-yard line by Chris Johnson. Oh! What a catch. I think Justin Severn, who was on the coverage, lost the football. You know, with Appalachian, they're almost it's like they're playing with six defensive backs because they're starting outside linebackers at one point in their college careers played DB. But Severn actually does a good job to catch up. And then at this point, he doesn't know where the ball is, it appears. Right. He is having to play catch up. And Severn's had such a great game last week. But again, Chris Johnson against Severn's, there's a big match mismatch, yep. and Georgia Southern took advantage of it. A straight handoff up the middle down to the 25-yard line. Adrian Peterson again. Joe Best on the tackle. Suddenly, if you're Appalachian, you've gone from thinking stop and get the ball back to at least keep him out of the end zone. That has to be your thought at this point. Still all kinds of time left. Nowhere near the territory where you think about using any of those three timeouts. Remember, they have those still at their disposal. Georgia Southern now with a second down. They give to Peterson. He gets inside the 25. He's got to get to the 20 for a first down. So it'll be third and about four to go. Again, Joe Best in on the tackle. This is the time that you, you practice for all week, this stage of the game. What a great uh, point in the ball game it is. And what a huge play now upcoming. Earlier this week on the Appalachian State Internet site, they had a picture of Joe Best up in the upper left-hand corner and a picture of Adrian Peterson down in the bottom right-hand corner. And it certainly has been on the last few plays anyway, a Peterson and Best matchup. Revere keeps trying to turn the corner. Does he get inside the 20? If so, he's got the first down. Let's see how they spot him at either rate. He stayed inbounds. Yep, he was inside the 20. First down, Georgia Southern. He stayed inbounds, and that'll keep the clock clicking. First down, Georgia Southern. Revere the fake give. That uh, bought him a little bit of time to get outside. Nice pursuit by Appalachian, though. Severns uh, did not bite, and Hall was right there, too, but enough yardage for the first. When you saw the number of white jerseys that collapsed on number three, you wondered did they overcommit to that fake, but they certainly did a great job of getting outside. First down from just inside the 20 for Georgia Southern. A change of the play, though. Back weathers off, put him in motion. Give it to Peterson. Can he get outside? He stiff arms. He gets outside. The flag is down, and there's a Peterson to the 15 and a flag on the play. And I have a feeling that the call will go against Georgia Southern. They threw it in the neighborhood of uh, where the wide receiver Johnson was trying to make a block, but and yet way, to indicate. The way Chris Johnson is standing there listening, almost saying, now wait a minute, that's not at all what I meant to do. 31-28 is our score for these two teams. The Southern Conference wars continue as next week Appalachian State will be at home against Wofford and Georgia Before Southern. the play, false start offense. Please put eight seconds back on the game clock. Georgia Southern will be at the Citadel next week. So the Southern Conference Wars continues for these guys. So not only do they have the uh, five yards against them, but they have to give eight seconds back. And uh, Paul Johnson not liking... Uh, Either of those you might expect, especially the fact that eight seconds, uh, Appalachian gets eight seconds more back on that clock. Penalty puts the ball on the 25, and after they add the eight seconds back, we are one tick under three minutes. The facial expression can tell a story that did just there. First and 15 for Georgia Southern from the Appalachian 25. The officials making sure they got the right football in. 
And they still haven't done the uh, scoreboard clock, made the adjustment. I believe that they wanted to go back up to 3.07. And that's what they're in the process of doing right now, as you can tell in the graphic. A little bit of a discussion going on between the Georgia Southern bench and the line judge. And that's still going on. Garland Berry. Jim Jackson about to tell us that the eight seconds have now been put back on the clock, so it's 3.04 left. Okay, 3.04. I thought they were the doing it based on uh, 2.59. But. Georgia Southern football, first down and 15. Revere under center. Fakes the handoff, keeps, goes inside the 20 on the dial. And now it's timeout time for Appalachian State. Georgia Southern, an incredible uh, points uh, to their opponents so far this year. They've beaten them on an average of 36 to 15. That time, Revere, for a second, split second, saw the daylight. Then he realized he has to go up and over. But they have been challenged uh, in games this year. Obviously, they were playing comeback most of the afternoon against or most of the evening against Georgia. And Wofford went right down to the wire in their Southern Conference opener. In fact, uh, Wofford, the visiting Terriers, had a chance with a Hail Mary at the uh, final gun to tie it, and that uh, was deflected away. So it's not as if Georgia Southern hasn't been in a close game this year, especially in the conference. So, J.R. Revere talking things over. 20 carries for 133 yards and two touchdowns. As we said earlier, Adrian Peterson well over the 100-yard mark. Jerry Moore's troops have done a good job of playing defense and keeping it close. This homecoming crowd must feel like Georgia Southern has this one in the bag. They're kind of enjoying other activities so the timeout is over 249 remaining in the game Georgia Southern up 31 28 a field goal puts this game into overtime for Appalachian if Georgia Southern scores on this possession you have to feel like fate will be on their side this could be the uh, decisive blow in your Appalachian again. That's what's so difficult about this time of the game and in this kind of field position because the slight bit of daylight uh, for Adrian Peterson gets uh, Georgia Southern right up against the end zone. Revere rolling right. He's got a convoy. Goes diving for the first down marker. But he's not going to make it. He's going to be short by about three yards. They will call him out of bounds at the 12, and he had to get to the 10. And Freeman, the inside linebacker, one of the linebackers for Appalachian, is uh, walking off the field. He Eight might have yards been banged up a little bit. This time, Revere is Florida. thinking nothing more than getting to a certain point on the field. And that time, once again, Hall, the, the big, fast guy, getting over close. Once again, Georgia Southern in a situation to try to move the chains on third down. 4 of 11 in third down conversions, 8 of 14 for Appalachian. Third down and two. And at this point in the game, at this point on the field, you have to believe if they don't make it on this one, they'll go for it. Oh, yeah. Chris Johnson split wide to the left. Man in motion to the near side. Revere will fake the handoff. Keep gets down to the eighth first down, Georgia Southern. First down, Georgia Southern. 2.36 to go in the game. Here's the play. And the impressive thing about Adrian Peterson is he gets hit hard on probably every play in the game because you have to respect the dive so much. Some fullbacks, you automatically know they haven't gotten the ball. You might just tap them down with your hands. But there's always a chance he's going to have the football, so you got to wrap him up every time he comes through. And on a pitch to the sidelines, there's a chance he might get his hands on it then, too, so yeah. you can never give up on him. And what it also does is make one extra guy usually commit to falling into the middle. It takes one guy out from going to the boundary. Straight up the middle, Adrian Peterson fumbles the ball into the end zone. Georgia Southern falls on it, but there's a flag at the 14. Adrian Peterson uncharacteristically fumbling on that play. He fumbled in the game last week 
Very uncharacteristic of him. But the way people hit him, it's amazing he hasn't fumbled more than he has. The penalty will bring it back. And also at this point in the game, too, Appalachian is tackling as much a football as they are a man. And everything, uh, any contact you have, there's going to be a reach for the ball, too. So the ball is on the 13 of Appalachian. First and goal, Peterson. Gets the handoff and gets inside the 10 down to about the 8. Joe Best again, who's done his best job today of shadowing Adrian Peterson. That's a mighty difficult assignment, and uh, he is one of the guys in the league who you could uh, you'd think have a decent job of doing it. Keep in mind, Peterson's gone for nearly 200 yards at last check. So uh, I don't know. If you figure he's going to get over 100, if you keep him under 250, maybe you've done a good job. And you had to see there how Best had to fight off a couple of blocks to get to him. J.R. Revere meeting with his head coach as well as the rest of the offensive unit as they call the timeout here. The good news for Appalachian State is they're down to the one timeout, but Georgia Southern must either score, try a field goal if they don't, uh, if fourth down comes up. I mean, they're in a... In a down and goal situation so it's not as if they can get a first down to you know renew the chains and get themselves four downs back so for whatever that's worth from the Appalachian State standpoint with just one timeout left that has to be something with a minute 59 left to go in the game Adrian Peterson now 30 carries 181 yards and there's your total yardage count and how do you like that a three-point game and less than 10 points difference in yards very close matchup Second if you're a football go fan and Georgia maybe Southern. not for either of these schools, you have to be watching this game and saying, boy, this is a great college football game. And it's indicative of this league. I mean, there is pretty good amount of agreement. This is the best league in the country at the 1AA level, and it's showing here today. Revere fakes, tries to keep, maybe should have pitched, but he gets dropped at the seventh. No gain on the play. And again, Appalachian calling a timeout. Going to try to save as much clock as they can. And now Appalachian with no timeouts left. Georgia Southern with two timeouts left. And Paul Johnson trying to figure out now with third down and goal to go. What do you go with? A couple of Georgia Southern fans there. Tell by the happy expressions on their face for this homecoming. Right there, he probably should have pitched the ball, but a great job defensively by Wallow, who stayed at home had that good low stance to keep him from going around him. And it's almost as if a, you had a defensive Mr. Outside, Mr. Inside going. Awalawa was a safety who had to worry about the uh, the keep and the upfield movement by the quarterback. Hall was a safety who had to loop uh, around and worry about the pitch and uh, contain the perimeter. Stay with us here on CSS. Coming up next, Central Arkansas at Henderson State. A minute 53 left to go in this one. Third down and goal to go from the seven for Georgia Southern. So goal to go from the seven. It's third down. Something else you've got to be thinking if you're Appalachian State, the ball probably stays in the ground because Georgia Southern doesn't want to stop the clock with a possible incomplete pass. J.R. Revere under center, man in motion to the near side, rolls right. He's got blockers, but he can't turn it upfield. A great job defensively there by Joe Best, who again is a tired, tired man as he gets slowly up off the turf. Nice job of wrapping up, and that time, without using the dive, it allowed Best to, at best, get himself uh, out there, commit a little bit more. Pretty good blocking done there by the uh, the right tackle that time, the freshman Collins. But Best is one tough customer to try to contain. He fights off the block nicely and then goes and grabs the leg and ties that up until he gets some help. And so there's a discussion going on on the field. They'll go ahead and wilt down the uh, play clock and uh, take it down and then call their timeout. That got him back uh, close to a minute left. That brought him about another 40 seconds off the clock. So a minute six left to go now with one timeout left for Georgia Southern. And at this point, it's fourth and goal to go. And Paul Johnson, I'm sure, is going to look into the eyes of his offensive unit and say, guys, 
tell me what to do. He's done it before. He looks at the scoreboard, he looks at the clock. Eight yards. You can try a uh, field goal attempt. You could line up, uh, try a fake field goal. But you're dealing with a very quick uh, and able uh, kick coverage team in Appalachian State. So you're risking the chance of the ball getting blocked. Uh, in case you were wondering, I'm going to be late tonight. Yes. Go ahead and push those dinner reservations back. Uh, this game's going down to the wire, as you should have expected with the top two teams in the league going out. That's right. Jerry Moore has to be proud of Appalachian. They played a very tough ball game. Came in with a good game plan. Want to say happy birthday wishes to Steve Shutt of the Southern Conference office celebrating a birthday today. He had hoped to be here, but his wife's expecting a baby, so he's hanging around the old hacienda. And Steve will tell you he hasn't celebrated too many of those birthdays. Not know? at all. No, not a whole lot of those in the file. Rob Barona's going to attempt a 25-yard field goal out of the hold of Chris Johnson. There's the snap. It's up. It's good. So with a minute one left to go in the ball game, Georgia Southern puts a little icing on their homecoming cake. Georgia Southern 34, Appalachian State 28. Based on the inconsistency of Wright, the Appalachian kicker, somewhat of a burden might have been lifted. Uh, off of the coaching staff for Appalachian State and Jerry Moore of a decision to make as to when to try a potentially tying field goal had it remained a three-point game. So now you know you've got to go to the end zone, so it takes some of the pressure off of your kicker uh, right. Uh, but now uh, the Mountaineers have shown they can move it downfield against the Eagles. The Eagles at times have been gambling. They've uh, been able to play back. They, they were able to gamble when they had the bigger lead earlier on. A prevent defense, though, allows a pretty good passer and experienced quarterback to thread through you. Special teams coverage on the kick. A return here. I, I squib it at this point if I'm Georgia Southern. We'll squib it, it and, and hope one of the up guys takes it. You've got fast, uh, you got your sprinters that can get down there. And uh, you know, for the most part, uh, and look where they've, uh, they've you've got uh, kind of in a in a zone area moving up for the return guys. you got Hall playing center field. He's uh, a little bit uh, forward up. Kornheiser, you have, to, you have to play good kick coverage here because uh, certainly a uh, any kind of a return gets Appalachian in great, great field position. Actually, it's Beard who's standing by the 20. I thought it was 24 instead it's 34, but still, they're thinking the ball's going to be squibbed right into that area. Let's see. Now they go along with it. He will kick it into the end zone, about four yards deep and taking a knee. Sheldon, Troy Albee, who had a notion. No return, State football. First and 10. So the Mountaineers will put it in play first and 10 from their own 20 with 61 seconds to go. Here comes David Reeves, who has had to, for the second time this season, come off the bench. Eight completions and 10 attempts, 76 yards, one touchdown. Reeves has thrown three touchdown passes, now four this season. Out of the shotgun. Dropping straight back, looking over the middle, complete. At the 35, up to the 40 on the completion. Just about every throw downfield will be an 11 yard toss or more because you want that clock stopped while you're running up uh, to the uh, football, or if not 11 yards, it'll be on the other side of the first down uh, marker. Gibson on the catch. Twin receivers to each side. Shotgun formation. Four step drop, looking over the middle. Now he's gonna have to run with it. He's gotta get out of bounds. Out of bounds he gets at the 45. Reeves doing a good job scrambling and then getting out of bounds. In 43 seconds, as you see on the game clock, uh, Reeves again, uh, you, you just love to see a quarterback like this because he has the poise. He's a kid who grew up with the game in a different way than most other kids. And he's gotten to see it. I'm sure he spent a lot of time sitting there with his dad and getting pointers that the average uh, son is not able to get if he's a rising quarterback. 43 seconds left. Reeves getting the play from the bench. Rusty Russell, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, giving through the headphones some instruction down on the field. There's the snap out of the shotgun. Looking, going long down the near sideline, and pass interference. Oh my. But 
Which way is it going to go? Well, the way Albe is celebrating, you think that he knows the call is against the uh, Georgia Southern defender, LeVar Rainey. Boy, it looked like Rainey simply got himself position Watch. in order to put himself between Looks the like and the ball. Both the receiver and the defender are playing tag here. That's right. I mean, right there, I guess they're calling the push up. It appears that he pushed off with his left hand. It looked like he had positioned himself from our angle, at least. We couldn't see the hand reach out, but it looked like he had done a nice job of denial defense in that case. So the pass interference call against Georgia Southern. The good news is if this were the pros, that's where the football would be spotted. The bad news is it's not it's from an Appalachian standpoint. So here's another look at it. Both players having a little contact there, but you can see the left hand he of did. Rainey down, huh? pushing off. And that's close enough at this stage of the game where you, where you call a play like that. First and 10 from the Georgia Southern 40. Thanks to the penalty, it's put him down in good field position. And once again, stop the clock. Appalachian with 36 seconds left to find the end zone. Pressure, scramble, throw it away. The incomplete pass stops the clock with exactly 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. This is where your speed on those corners for Georgia Southern really comes into play. The last thing you want to do is get burned on the, the fade down the sideline. You know that there's probably going to be some options for Reeves over the middle. That's fine. Keep it in the middle of the field. Let that clock run if the ball is caught or at least have them have to hurry to the line after a first down. Second and ten for Appalachian. Reeves taking the short drop. Again, being pressured, scrambling. He's going to throw it complete at the 35 and getting out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And he barely got rid of the football before he crossed the line of scrimmage. What a play. It was inches before he crossed over the 40-yard line. And I've got to think Paul Johnson is saying that uh, he was across the, the line. But, boy, impressive stuff right there by Reeves. He apparently just released it before he crossed the plane. And then Razak able to catch it, get out of bounds. Probably so the pass completion puts the ball at the Georgia Southern 33. Third down and three yards to go for Appalachian State. Reeves wanting to pass, has a man open, complete at the 26 and out of bounds at the 23. First down, Appalachian. And now what you're faced with is Appalachian, you're at the 25-yard line, you got 18 seconds to go. Do you throw three to the end zone now or try to get a little bit closer? If you get a little bit closer, all you're doing is bunching things up and not giving your receivers a whole lot of room to work. And against a very good secondary, that could be a, a major challenge. The stiffest, tough, toughest test that Georgia Southern secondary has had is coming at him right now in the next 18 seconds. Gibson wide right. By the way, feel free to stand along with the 21,000 here uh, at home. I don't think there's anybody sitting down. Visitors, home fans, everybody's on their feet. The ball, the nose of the ball on the 25 of Georgia Southern. First and 10. And again, I think you treat this like first and goal from the 25. Reeves out of the shotgun. There's the snap. Dropping straight back. He's got pressure. Freddy Pescara hits him as the ball is thrown. Freddy Pescara hit him just as the ball was thrown. And Reeves is slow to get up. Second down and 10. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 13 seconds left. Watch, he looked like he was looking over the middle on, uh, with first at Razak on a slant. And he is just nailed by the skate. Another big play by a big playmaker. 13 seconds left, second and 10. There's the snap. Reeves straight back, over the middle. Intercepted! Intercepted at the five-yard line by Nick. Gates, who's been burned a couple of times today defensively, comes up with a big play. And back at the 35-yard line, Reeves walks off the field with his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder hanging. He was in a lot of pain after he released that ball. And the way he released it, keep an eye on how he released it, it's almost as if the shoulder pops, maybe as a result of the previous hit. See, and you can kind of see he kind of winced in pain, and, and that ball had nothing on it when it was going well behind the receiver, Gibson. It was intended to get it to Gibson at about the... Uh, five-yard line at which point uh, they I guess thought the clock would stop 
Wow, that's a tough situation. Appalachian may have just lost two quarterbacks in this game for a significant period of time. So there's seven seconds left. Officials line out. The officials have called a timeout. And so now they say they're ready. And all Georgia Southern has to do is take a knee. And they will. So as the clock ticks down, Georgia Southern has come away a 34-28 winner over Appalachian State. It was a test for Paul Johnson and company when they built the big lead at 24-7. You had the feeling Appalachian State would not go away. Jerry Moore and crew got back in the game, came back several times, but Georgia Southern, after taking the lead, never yields. Paul Johnson with a great big sigh of relief, and all that does is keep Georgia Southern in the hunt for the Southern Conference title. And Paul Johnson, one happy man as he walks off the field, a game that he waited for from this time last year till now, because as soon as the game was over with, he was ready to play it again. He couldn't wait for this uh, weekend to come up, and he's been focused on it. And he is a guy who uh, takes the very few uh, losses he's had in his head coaching career here at Georgia Southern very personally. There have only been seven now in 50 games. He's 43 and seven as Georgia Southern's head coach. And more importantly now, his team is the one in the driver's seat as far as the league goes. They've still got some hurdles ahead, but this is a huge win for them. Gus, the mascot for Georgia Southern, carries the flag of victory. Georgia Southern, 34. Appalachian State, 28. We're back right after this timeout. Georgia Southern comes away with a homecoming win today, 34 to 28 over the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Georgia Southern now goes to 5 and 0 oh in the conference, 6 and 1 overall. Appalachian State goes to 3 and 1 in the conference, 4 and 2 overall and a very very close game in many of the statistical categories, Pete. And certainly the total yards, but when you look at the rushing, Georgia Southern packs that punch and that's what they do and they did it today and uh, in terms of uh, the rushing yards, you see the comparison, the passing yards the other way around. Uh, the passing, really nice jobs done by both quarterbacks, Burchett, and then Reeves on in relief. The, the, the worst news, uh, or as, as accompanying the bad news of the loss today, is Appalachian may be uh, down two quarterbacks based on this afternoon. Burchett had to leave with a sprained ankle, and then Reeves on his final throw of the game, you could see him leave the field in pain with his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder. He'd been hit hard on the play before. And that's a scary moment, but again, across the board, a evenly played game. Maybe the turning point is that time right out of the uh, halftime locker room when Appalachian uh, came out. Georgia Southern had the ball and like lightning struck. First play from scrimmage, Revere went in for a touchdown, and then moments later, Appalachian couldn't convert on third and then fourth down and short yardage and Georgia Southern responded with a quick touchdown built a lead Appalachian whittled away but never overtook them and while they did not have many passing yardage they had uh, 38 on one play to Chris Johnson which ended up being six points a touchdown and uh, so Georgia Southern mixes up a good balance of the run as well as the pass uh, as the sun sets in the Statesboro area the folks who wear the blue and white are happy tonight They've come away with a hard-fought, well-earned 34-28 victory. And the folks from Appalachian State will enjoy a ride home knowing that their football team played well and played another good quality football team. And this particular day, it was the folks wearing the blue and white that came out on top. The worst part of the outcome is that the sun may be setting on Appalachian's title hopes, possibly, depending on what Georgia Southern does the rest of the way. But uh, this game certainly showed Appalachian can hang with anybody. All right, we'll come back with some final thoughts from Alan E. Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, where Georgia Southern wins today, 34-28. We're back after this. Well, at the beginning, we told you this would be a great 1AA football game, and neither team let us down. The final 34-28, Georgia Southern coming up uh, a winner here today, much uh, in part to that man right there, J.R. Revere who does a great job of running the spread offense. Game by game showing quite a bit of maturity. And now if you're Appalachian State, you're at the very uh, least hoping things are going in the reverse of last year when there was a three-way tie between the Mountaineers and Eagles and also Furman. 
each knocked the other off. Each finished with one league loss, so Appalachian will be pulling for Furman down the line, but for Appalachian, uh, they'll get a tough test at home from Wofford next week, a Terriers team that can really control the tempo of a game with their offense, and they're going to see the footballs flying and some other affairs as the schedule goes on. Chattanooga is uh, certainly a high-passing team, and VMI. And then for Georgia Southern, the schedule ahead remains at the Citadel next week against East Tennessee State at home. Then they go to Furman, and that game will, of course, be shown right here on CSS. They'll close out the season at home against Elon. So those are the remaining games for both of these schools. And uh, certainly for these schools, we wonder what happened today. And we know that in uh, taking a look at the uh, scoreboard, we know that the Wofford Terriers were winners today as uh, they beat, uh, well, our score here was 40-31 Wofford mm -hmm. over Western. Yeah. And uh, that game was actually played at Wofford, but uh, they are the winning team on right. top there. And They've won four in a row, and they're now three and one in the league. And Furman defeated the Citadel 33-7. to So next week, uh, the uh, Georgia Southern Eagles will play the Citadel coming off a loss. Wofford will play, uh, of course, uh, Appalachian State having won. So it will be a couple of matchups next week that Southern Conference eyes will watch. But all of 1AA football was looking at this one today. And if you are a fan of Georgia Southern, 34-28 was the final. And if you are a fan of Appalachian State, you know that your ball club uh, played very, very hard and uh, was in a very, very tough game here today. So Georgia Southern, a winner, 34-28. We'll come back and wrap things up. I'm sorry, we'll say goodnight to you. Stay tuned. Gulf South Conference football coming up next. For Pete Yannity, Ted Byrne, so long, everybody. <laughs>